Welcome back, everybody. You're looking live at the North Carolina Speedway, and with a threat of rain in the area, this event is just about three quarters of a lap away from going green. The starting grid sponsored by Route 66, jeans, clothes, it's not Main Street, only at Kmart. Daryl Waltrip, number 10 qualifying spot. That's super. DW had a top 10 last year at Sears Point. He had a top 10 on an oval track at New Hampshire a couple of years ago, but that's great to see. Kenny Wallace, you saw him. Kenny was third quickest in final practice here yesterday. And on down the field, you pick out your favorite as we're set to go 393 laps. That's 400 miles around the 1.017 mile North Carolina Speedway. We will have eight on board cameras for you as our afternoon continues. The Bud Pole numbers, a record performance for Rusty Wallace. His second Rockingham pole, and here we go, green flag. Glad you're with us on TNN Sports from the Rock. of 150 miles an hour. Rusty Wallace scooting away as we're on board. Bobby Labonte running in third. Ricky Rudd just ahead of him. And then Rusty Wallace, the race leader, who, by the way, Rusty has led more laps at Rockingham than any other active driver in NASCAR Winston Cup competition as we see Bobby Labonte scooting to the inside of Ricky Rudd. Yes, and Ricky Rudd said yesterday he was not pleased with this car. They made a lot of changes on it. He was not running very well in the last practice. So look for him to kind of set a pace and hope that the car comes to him as they go along. In contrast, Labonte had a great final practice session yesterday. He was among the quickest cars on old tires. Running fast on old tires is a great key to success here at Rockingham. Lloyd Burton in the 22. He was quickest in happy hour final practice. He's challenging the number 40 of Sterling Marlin for the 11th spot. That was almost more than a challenge as they started off the corner. Here's Dale Jarrett in the 88, the 6 of Mark Martin. That is 28th and 29th spot. And the reason the sixth car is way back there is he brushed the wall on the first day of uh, qualifying and had to qualify the second day. The 88 crew just missed the setup. And they didn't have a good qualifying run either, but both those cars will be up front before long. Count on. The nine is Stacy Compton. Graduating from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, just tickled to be in NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. There's Darrell Walsh at the 66 with the 12 of Mayfield and the 6 of Mark Martin scooting either way around Darrell Walter. Darrell already, already using the high line there. That would say that the car may not be turning like he wants to do in the center of the corner. And again, you see the 22 of Ward Burton. He scooted to the inside, made it three wide to grab some spots. There's Dale Jarrett climbing his way even closer to the front in 27th as we ride with him. Awful dicing this early in the race to be running this much three wide. Now, obviously, the sun is out now, but everybody knows what the weatherman has been forecasting, and that is rain middle to late afternoon. When, or if at all, it hits is anybody's guess, but they're keeping one eye on the track, one eye on the skies, as Rusty Wallace and Bobby Labonte now pull away by about a second on third place Ricky Rudd. And Bobby Labonte about a car lift lower than Rusty Wallace in the corner, meaning the Pontiac there, the 18 car, is really sticking to the racetrack the way he wants. Okay. Ralph, what are you hearing from Bobby Labonte's pit? Looks like he's getting a good grab off the racetrack. He does have a very good car, Eli, but they had engine problems late yesterday afternoon. They developed a lifter problem, so they changed the engine. Now, the engine that he is running here now is a new configuration that head engine builder Mark Cronquist has developed for Joe Gibbs Racing. They used it near the end of last season. That configuration did run not only with Bobby Labonte, but with Tony Stewart as well, and it has found its way to victory lane, but there's still some uncertainties about this engine. When it works well, it is very, very strong. Mark Cronquist, the engine builder, one of the best in the business from the state of Alaska. He sought 
his dream, saw it in North Carolina, and headed this away. Well, Eli, we were talking about the grooves. I'm watching Rusty Wallace right now. He's not leaning on the right side tires as hard as Bobby Labonte is running that low. This might be a ploy in the early part of this race not to abuse the tires and, and have tire later. Watching Mark Martin work his way up through traffic will zero in on the number six. There he is in 23rd spot right there middle of your screen. Dick Bergman for those who are new to NASCAR racing maybe have never seen a race from Rockingham. So much tire talk. Why is tire wear a factor here when it's not as major of a factor elsewhere? It's because the racetrack is so abrasive. If you were to get down on your hands and knees and take a look at this place, it looks like the worst sandpaper that you ever saw. Uh, and that just tends to hurt the tires a bit and slows the cars down. So the idea here is for guys to find the line on the racetrack that saves the tires the best, but also lets the car run as fast as possible. Now, some setups are going to run better on the bottom, some in the middle, some upstairs. Now, this is called the Sand Hills region of North Carolina. Underneath everything in and around this area through Pinehurst, Southern Pines, everything is based on sand and sandpaper. Well, you know what it does to anything. Same thing we're seeing here. And it's interesting that the compound that actually makes up the asphalt here is by design different than other asphalt racetracks, all because of the same hills region. So it really is a, a handful for the tires. Watching Dale Jarrett there in the number 88 machine. He's in 31st spot and feeling some heat right now from Johnny Benson in that black number 10. That's the same car that was white at Daytona a week ago. The folks who sponsor the car, Lyco, said, we've got our money, we'd like the car to be black in color, and they said, yes, sir, Mr. Lycos. and that's why we've seen the change from one week to the next. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I think Dale Jarrett's having a little bit of problem in handling. He's backing up just a little bit, and these cars, he's running a very high line. They will adjust on this car and get it better, but he is really taking a high line around the racetrack at this moment. Steve Burns, you're down in Dale's pit. Any uh, complaints? Yeah, sounds like it, Eli. He's dropped to 31st on the race course. The problem is his car is very tight when he gets into that corner. He said traditionally, before the race, traditionally he has a hard time turning it in the center of the turns, and they had that very same problem here today. The race car is tight. So that's the update on Dale Jarrett. Up front, Rusty Wallace continues to lead as he has since they dropped the green flag. He has four tenths of a second of an advantage on Bobby Labonte, who's running second, and then two and a half seconds on Ricky Rudd, who's running in third. There you see the front two right there, and another two seconds back to the Texaco Haviland machine running in the third spot. Just underway. Grabs up the drink. Stick around. We're back in a moment. Are under caution here at the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. Predictably, the leaders taking a chance to make an early pit stop. Steve? Hey, Eli, the 88 is in. As we said, he cannot turn this race car in the middle of the corner. They're going to take one round of fight out of the left rear of the 88 of Dale Jarrett. So a lot of work here. Yes, you give up some track position, but we're only 20 laps in to a 393 lap event. So no major problems right there. Come on in. Yeah, give up a few spots on the racetrack to get that car so it can turn. And let's talk about the early morning rain that we had here that washed this racetrack off and changed everything as far as setups. You saw Darrell Waltrip leaving. Here's what happened seconds ago off turn number four. Up high goes Kenny Irwin, lost it there. Others locked up to try and avoid him. Robbie Gordon spun around away from him. When everybody else also got on the binders, guys, I guess Chad Little got rear-ended in the process. There you see Gordon sliding on the apron of the racetrack. And Dale Jarrett just did get through the middle part of that wreck. Matter of fact, what there you see Chad Little, the 97, just does get a little bit there with Robert Presley. And here's what Dale Jarrett saw. Yeah, oh, baby. Is that just luck at that point, buddy? Pretty much so. I tell you, he was very lucky to get through there because he couldn't see where he was going, that's for sure. Riding with Jeff Fuller, he just follows Kenny Schrader around the high side of the racetrack and uh, gets out of everybody's way. And here's Chad Little back in now for another stop at lap number 21. 
you saw where he and Robert Presley just did get together just tangled there. You always hear go to the high side of a racetrack that's banked this much because it's a cleaning racetrack. Once you hit the wall you'll always go down. Field is going to get the one to go signal as they get back to the stripe here at the North Carolina Speedway. Glad you're able to join us. Race number two of the NASCAR Winston Cup schedule. One guy who has really made some nice moves is Steve Park, who started back in 18th. You see that yellow machine, an eighth in line right there, going off into turn number one, the Pennzoil machine. And Steve Park has found himself battling near the front. Good job for the Pennzoil bunch. Don't forget, folks, you can power up your desktop computers right now so you can ride along in real time with all of our in-car cameras log on to tnnracing.com for exclusive in-car views from Dale Jarrett Tony Stewart Bobby Labonte Jeff Burton Ricky Rudd Dale Earnhardt Jr. We've got them all for you get the latest track news listen in on the team scanner talk all of that's available to you right now at tnnracing.com Getting set to go back to green. Rusty Wallace has led from the beginning. Bobby Labonte second. Jeff Gordon third. Dale Earnhardt fourth. Fifth is Ricky Rudd on the restart. Sixth will be Jeff Burton ahead of Matt Kenseth. Seventh, Steve Park eighth. Bill Elliott ninth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is tenth on the restart. One and two, you see the third and fourth place cars. Gordon in the 24, using all the banking he can up there. 25 degrees of banking. Bobby, Le Bobby Labonte just seems to want that low lane all day long. He has tried to get by Rusty on the bottom, and the thing that's a surprise is ordinarily that's where Rusty is, but today he's a lane up. The view from second back towards third. for the lead. Well, the good part about the racetrack today is you have several grooves out there. Low groove, middle groove, and high groove is working because of the Bush Grand National Race that was held here yesterday. Rusty Wallace, the race leader, won both races here in 93. Won the February race in 94. Probably should have won a couple, three more. In addition to that, leading, had engine problems and so on. He's always one of the fellows to look at. Last year in the fall, he had a fifth place car. Actually, probably had a car a little further back than that, but made it a fifth place car. I've noticed that people that run very well in Bristol run very well here also. The racetracks, you have to be very regimented as to how you get through the corners. And he is that. He's one of the best short track drivers of all times, and he, he never overdrives his car. Good point. There you see the cat car. That was Ward Burton picking his way through traffic. The eight is Dale Earnhardt Jr. That whole group of cars is 18th on back. Mark Martin in the six, right in the middle of it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. We're riding with him in 14th. And you see the clouds overhead. Again, the weatherman says there is a chance of rain here today. That's why this race began just... Uh, Right on the money at 12.32 Eastern time. Eli, look at this. Three wide down the front straightaway as they start in, and here they have a change for the lead now. Bobby Labonte inside of Rusty Wallace in turn three. Hasn't got it yet, though. No, he's fighting back on the outside. Rusty has. He'll get a better run off the corner. And you watch him. He'll pull ahead about a half a car lift by the start-finish line. As they head in the next corner. Bobby's trying to make that bottom group work. Rusty has momentum coming out of the corner. Rusty Wallace still sitting with 49 career NASCAR Winston Cup wins. Same as Jeff Gordon. Number 50 on the horizon for both. There is Gordon in third spot. Now Gordon is a master at finding a place that that car will work. He'll move around. I watched him win a race a few years back by changing his line and picking up almost a half a second on used tires. Now, Dale Jarrett talked about just that thing with Jeff Gordon. He talked about a race a couple of years ago here where he had him almost a lap down, and Gordon and his guys just kept working and working and working on the car. End of the race, guess who's winning? Gordon. 
They see a good scramble middle of the field now. The 16, Kevin LePage. 88 is Dale Jarrett. They're up to 24th and 25th spots now. Dale Ward Earnhardt Burton. Jr. is falling back in the eight car there just a little bit. Meanwhile, conversely, Ward Burton now has rocketed up to the ninth spot. Glenn, when they came in, I guess for a look at the tires, huh? Well, yeah, they were. You know, you know, you were talking about this cloudy condition. Well, that made Ward Burton's car very, very tight. He was fastest in happy hour yesterday, but the car was had a real bad push. Take a look at the tire, the, the temperatures that they put on here. Now, these tires are put in order to come off the car. This is the right rear. You can see it's 195, 190, 180. Look at this center reading, 190. Then look up here to the front tires, 200 degrees, 195, and 190. They took these temperatures right after the tires were taken off. When the right front tire is hotter, that means that it's shoving the nose of the car a little bit, heating that right front up. So they took that early pit stop and that early caution as an opportunity to come in and adjust that car. It looks like they made a great adjustment because Ward is running really fast right now. He is. He's come right towards the front. With the number 22, he's in the fifth position. There's the number four of Bobby Hamilton. He restarted 24th, and look at him now going right around Earnhardt, and he'll grab a position as well. Bobby Hamilton driving for Morgan McClure Racing. Here's a great note. They are still the only single-car Chevrolet team, single-car Chevy team, to have won a race since the start of the 95 season. And when I walked into his garage this morning, the crew just grabbed me by the arm and said, we are going to win this race today. We have the car to do it. We have the driver to do it as well. Bobby Hamilton is real good today. Watch him. Sterling Marlin on the move, and here comes Ward Burton. We told you he was quick. He's going to try and challenge Rusty Wallace for the lead. And there's a bullet just on back side of this frame right here. Look at that four car. He just went by Bobby Labonte like he was stopped down the back straightaway. And when y'all said the four car was going to be good today, I said he hadn't been good all week. And you said last practice he was, doctor. Yep. He is definitely flying. We also told you Ward Burton was quickest in final practice yesterday. As you see the four, Hamilton going around Rusty Wallace to grab second. Wallace back to third, but Ward Burton, one win, five top tens in 11 Winston Cup races here, and who can forget that great battle with his brother here a season ago? And also Bobby Hamilton, when he was driving for the King, when he was driving the 43 car, looked like he had to race one here. He and Earnhardt made contact. He got into the wall, knocked his day out there, but I'll tell you what, Bobby Hamilton right now is much quicker than anybody on the racetrack. So we're just getting going. Over the years, we've seen 25, 27, 30 lead changes here at Rockingham. We've had our first one of the day today. Ward Burton now showing the way at the Rock. Ward Burton continues to lead, and if you are logged on right now to NASCAR Online at NASCAR.com, you'll get all the up-to-the-second statistical information, all the latest news. Do what we all do throughout the week, every day. Everybody seems in the world of NASCAR to log on to NASCAR.com, your 24-hour NASCAR Winston Cup Garage Pass. There's Mark Martin in the sixth. He's moved up to fourth now, restarted 26th after making those stops back on lap number 20, came in for tires, and he has restarted 26th. He's running fourth. Meanwhile, Dale Jarrett, if you're curious, from 27th, he's now in 15th. And Bobby Labonte has backslid to six as we ride with him now, heading off into turn number three. And all of the top four cars did come in on that caution flag and took on new tires, and those new tires have decidedly helped them. No doubt about it. If you go over five laps here and, and you get a caution, if you can, get tires because they're so key here. There's a good ninth, tenth, and eleventh place battle on your screen. Riding with Jeff Burton, you see the Pennzoil machine of Steve Park, and then Dale Earnhardt in the three. Yeah, you can see Dale Earnhardt as he started off the corner. He made about three passes at it. The back jumped out, then the front took off. Right now, he's having a little handling problem. You want to hear an interesting story about Earnhardt? He was really kind of perplexed. He was saying the other day, he said, over the years, in the last 14 races here, he had a couple of wins, a couple of seconds, a third, a seventh, an eighth, a couple of ninths, an 11th place finish. Then all of a sudden, 
Last year, in the spring, he finishes 41st. In the fall, he finished 40th. No doing of his own, but nevertheless, he said, all of a sudden, my luck's gone out the window here. <laughs> He's thinking <laughs> on his that? own car. Yeah, he owns, Earnhardt owns that number one of Steve Park. And he was just trying to say, hey, help me or get out of the way or do something. No, he just wanted to make sure he yeah. was up on the steering wheel. He'll do that every once in a while. When I used to race against him, every once in a while, he'd just peck on you just to make you mad to see if you get a little rattled. Meanwhile, Mike Skinner's machine is all the way back in 39th position. You'll see it go by right there on the Napa Rundown. The folks from Napa bringing you climbing and scoring in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And you see Skinner back in 39th spot. There's his crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Let's get an update from that pick. And Eli, they started 12th. There you guys have really dropped. What's the problem? Yeah, I mean, I really didn't hear what you said, but the bottom line is we should have pitted a while ago. But, I mean, the car went through a terrible transition during that caution period. You know, there's a lot of cars that's not running that bad that didn't take tires on, but obviously it's been us. Well, Larry Mack getting right to the storyline there. Probably should have made the stop, and Skinner is now five and a half seconds behind the race leader, Ward Burton. Interesting strategy with Earnhardt's black number three car. You know, we've been talking a lot about tire spin and what people might do about it. His crew has changed the engine on that car. They've used a different intake manifold, different exhaust manifold, and they've also gone to a progressive throttle system to try and prevent Earnhardt from spinning the tires coming off. Obviously, it's working well today. It is working awfully well as Earnhardt finds himself in the top ten, but nothing working better than Ward Burton's cat machine. He took the lead at lap 35 and has not looked back since. Welcome back, everybody. While Ward Burton leads on the racetrack, Matt Kenseth smacks the wall in turn four. Steve, what are they saying as far as the degree of damage? We live on the left-hand side of the car. We can't see much. They're going to change four tires on the number 17. They also made a chassis adjustment to the right rear. But on the left side of this race car, that said, we see no damage whatsoever. He did smack it with the right side. You see that yellow tape on the back of the car. If you're new to NASCAR racing, that is indic indicative of a rookie stripe. So everybody around you knows that I'm a rookie. How much could have gone wrong, buddy, when he slaps the wall like that? How many different things could have gone amiss, could have been broken, could have been knocked out of line? Well, the first thing I noticed, it had concrete dust on the right side tires. So that means that it tried to knock the rear end housing in, inboard. Also, the ball joints and all to the front right side had to be damaged just a little bit. And you see it there on the lower right of your screen, that onboard look from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s camera as Kenseth with the new tires goes right by Jeff Fuller and continues on his way. Steve, got anything else? Yeah, Buddy Baker was exactly right. The crew's looking at the tire now, and you can see, or the crewman can see where it did hit the wall. You can see red and white paint on the right side of that Goodyear tire. And they also have reported, we're just hearing that Matt has said the toe-in has been knocked out, which means it is not going to drive very well for very long. The toe-in is what, buddy? That means the front tires are like this now instead of being straight ahead. So that really makes them drive very wicked down the straightaway and into the corner. Take a look at some of the telemetry from Jeff Fuller's machine. 6,500 RPM, 7,000, continuing to climb at about 150 miles an hour. and upwards towards 160 and yeah, about 8400 down the straightaway there's Matt Kenseth if you're curious about the rookies there you see where they started and where they are now currently running bottom line is this is not as easy a racetrack as it looks oh this is a tough tough racetrack I mean here's Kenseth who won here in a Bush series car back in 1998 trying the Winston Cup and boom pounds the thing off the wall between turns three and four. He's going to have a long afternoon. Meanwhile Dale Jarrett in the 88 car the seven of Michael Waltrip all picking their way through that pack of traffic working to the front. Jarrett is now sixth. Michael Waltrip is now seventh. So the pit stops back on lap number 20 obviously worked as they have caught up with this lead pack of machines and try to climb their way towards the front. You know, the bad part right now is the guys, for the guys that made the pit stop is great news, but for the guys that are on old tires right now, great race cars are going to lap down. 
Earnhardt Jr. in the pits. Early stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr. at lap number 62, or is it? Let's get an update as he goes to pit all the way around the turn. He pits near the turn one exit after this track expanded their pit lane a year ago and got rid of the back pit lane area. Glenn? Yeah, Eli, he has brought the car in and gotten really ill. He just could not keep the car. Uh, he couldn't hardly turn it through the corners. I've been watching through one and two here, making a major chassis adjustment to the right rear. Uh, the car was shoving the nose. It will be four tires. This is a scheduled pit stop. They did not come in. They were not one of the pit. He is down in the way. He's lost valuable time. Just to add to that, what you were talking about, those guys that pitted, right now, the first seven positions are occupied by guys who pitted on lap 20 and took on four fresh tires. You cannot give up 20 laps on tires and expect to keep up for very long. That's pretty much a truism anywhere the NASCAR Winston Cup schedule goes, but particularly here at Rockingham. Their second place, Bobby Hamilton, behind Ward Burton in the 22. That is 2.3 seconds. So there you see the differential right there again from Ward Burton back to Bobby Hamilton. 2.3 seconds, 65 laps complete of 393. A warm day, but still a threat of rain at Rockingham. Burton in the cat car continues as the leader here at the North Carolina Speedway. Has there ever been a change in the on-track storyline, though? Dale Earnhardt is making a pit stop. Many others as well. Steve Burns. Earnhardt just came in. He lied to four tires. They also made a chassis adjustment to the right rear of the number three Goodrich Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. You see Jeff Gordon pulling away, but Ralph Jeff was already a lap down. He'd already been lapped before he made a stop. Eli, he was desperately in need of tires. They went down a pound or half a pound in the left rear. That car was pretty tight. Bobby Labonte is now making his way down Pin Road. Gordon's hoping those new tires can help him get some of those laps back. This is lap number 73. Rusty Wallace also went a lap down on the racetrack before he came in to make a stop at lap number 68. Now Jimmy Maycar and the crew going to work on the interstate batteries Pontiac. Now the big question is all the cars that got a lap down have fresh tires now and these other guys are out there on warm tires. Will they be able to make up that deficit? Back to Ralph. Well, two rounds of wedge in and they're leaving the track car alone and they went one pound down on the rear tires a 16.2 second stop a very strong stop for this Joe Gibbs team Eli they're also having a problem with the cross member dragging on the car as he goes through three and four he's really struggling with the car bottoming out so the setup's a story here today there you see the race leader Ward Burton he has two and seven tenths seconds of an advantage on Bobby Hamilton who is now running second. Mark Martin is third. Sterling Marlin fourth. And Terry Labonte still running in the fifth spot. From first, however, back to fifth is 14 seconds. That's the way Ward Burton's getting around right now. From first back to fifth, 14 seconds as Ward Burton Makes a move around Jeff Fuller and will put Fuller get, or excuse me, uh, around the 25 of Jerry Nadeau getting set to put him a lap down. And you saw what new tires did right there. Wallace in that number 55 blue car just on the bottom of Burton, the leader, and boom, he simply blew by him. Buddy, you're right. Oh, and you see how the how uh, 22, how he just yep. lost it right there. He's going to have to come in for tires pretty soon. He can't hang on to that thing much longer. Other pit stops taking place. Brett Bodine is in at lap number 77. He's in for a scheduled stop. All of this under green. He had only one caution, a brief one at lap 18, when Robbie Gordon, Kenny Irwin, Chad Little, Robert Presley all tangled up in turns three and four. Watch it again, what Dick Bergman was talking about on the bottom of the screen. Watch Ward Burton. This car right here, you can watch him as he fights for control there. What happens there is you have 750 horsepower and you're coming out of the corner already slipping. You get the throttle a little too much and it just breaks the back end loose on the car. And one lap ago, Tommy Ball would just call toward Burton and said, 10 more laps, 10 more laps, tire management. That's about all I have heard today from Tommy Baldwin to his driver is tire management. Good job, buddy. Tire management. Save the tires. 
easier said than done. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially when you're calling it from the pitch and you're not behind the wheel. You take a look at the rundown there in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. That'll show you the speed at the line. First place car, number 22, how fast he's going. And again, who has the quickest laps? Actually, quickest right now is Terry Labonte. And Terry is now 13 and two tenths of a second back. Good lap for Michael Walter, third fastest. Talking about Terry Labonte, he has his old crew chief back, Gary Dehart, and they really get along well. And they seem to have that championship ability to talk back and forth and get that car where Terry Labonte needs it to be. The Iron Man in his 638th consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup start today. While we're watching on track, more pit stops taking place. Kyle Petty is in at lap number 81. Those of you following Kyle's progress today. You can see Dale Earnhardt Jr. on fresh tires just go by Ward Burton and just smoke him right on out of the picture there. He's pulling about 15 car lengths in one corner. So uh, I guarantee you right now, Ward's saying, uh, I'd like to come in and get tires right now, but they know they have to go a certain distance or quicker. See now, Rusty Wallace going yeah. by now, getting back one of those laps. What's going to be interesting here is that about 15 laps ago, Mike Skinner finally came in. Remember, his crew chief Larry McReynolds told us earlier how upset he was and he didn't call for a tire change back on lap number 20. Steve, he came in, got the tires. He's gone from 40th up to 39th. Hey, you know what? We heard uh, Glenn Jarrett talking about tire temperatures. There's two other things these teams will check, Eli. This is a tread depth indicator. There's holes across the tire. They'll put this in get a measurement and they'll write it right on the tire and that tells them how the tire is wearing from one side to the other as well they also check the air pressure to see how much pressure has built up from the time they put the tires on to the time they take the tires off so very exact science here in the pits taking care of these tires tire management heard it all day pit stop still a story now here comes Steve Park while the four takes the lead Bobby Hamilton makes the move and grabs the lead, brings Mark Martin along with him in the Valvoline machine. So a change for the lead in lap number 84 as Bobby Hamilton, who won here, driving for Richard Petty. But now here comes a scramble off the corner and Ward Burton says, enough. I'm coming to pick wall. <laughs> Time to get some new Goodyears. He'll just follow everyone right down the pit lane. Jerry may do coming down in the 25 car also making a pit stop now. All of this taking place under green at lap number 86. You saw Rick Mast coming in as well. Around the turn, pitting near turn number one. Ward Burton to a stop. Yeah, Ward brings it in, and believe it or not, guys, now he's saying that the car is loose. Remember, I showed you the tire tips a while ago that, that showed the car was tight. Now Ward is saying uh, it's a little bit loose. We need to tighten it up just a little bit. So obviously, the racetrack is changing. A little bit of trouble on the left front there. Uh, I don't know what the problem was. He just couldn't get the wheel off. Now he's finally got it off. And he is uh, finally down and away. Wow. Slow stop. I got him at about 21 and a half. And you saw Mark Martin make the pass. Bobby Hamilton makes the stop. You also saw Mark's car get away on him there up the bank. And the other thing you have to remember, they're, in a, they're already planning on the, the run for the points this year. That was an extra five-point bonus there for Mark Martin to lead that lap. Look for him on pit road pretty soon. Michael Waltrip is in. Here comes Dale Charriton for service as well. After that 17-second stop, there's Jarrett coming in, and running in the fourth spot. Here's Bobby Hamilton leaving. Mark Martin comes in. Sterling Marlin is now the race leader. He'll take over the top spot. You know what's going to happen today? He who's in front, this is going to sound silly, he who's in front of the laps run out wins, but you know what I mean? It's going to be a cycle of pit stops. Whoever's turn it is to be on the track is going to just grab the checker. Steve? Mark Martin is in. We've seen an awful lot of chassis adjustments down here on pit road, Eli, but so far none on the number six for Mark Martin. Mike Garrett gets the jack up. Sean Parker on the rear tires. 17.4 seconds for Mark Martin. Sterling Marlin, the race leader, comes in. Here comes Darrell Waltrip behind him. He'll make the pit stop as well. Ted Musgrave in the Jeffrey Bodine car, the power team Chevrolet. The lead will cycle on around 
to either Elliot Sadler or Mark Martin. Sadler will pick, so Mark Martin will reassume the lead. It's all happening that quickly. All of this under green at lap number 90 here at Rockingham. Bit of a lengthier stop for the Sterling Marlin Bunch. Kenny Irwin is in. Jeff Fuller is in. All of this under the green at lap number 91 now. And there you see everyone unlapping themselves, cycling back on around. Yeah, and you see Rusty Wallace all the way up to third place already. So they've, they've unlapped themselves and got themselves back in the sequence pretty much. Now, Rusty Wallace is the race leader. Watch what happened to Elliot Sadler here seconds ago when he came in to make a stop. Hard on those brakes. And the reason for that is the pit road speed. You see that white mark behind the car there? You have to have it down to the designated speed down pit road when you pass that white line. So let's set it for you. Rusty Wallace just passed by Bobby Hamilton. You saw it happen seconds ago. So Hamilton now the new leader. The number four is the race leader. Rusty Wallace in the number two is bypassed by Mark Martin. So Martin is now in second in the six. Rusty is running in third. Bobby Labonte is fourth. Dale Earnhardt fifth. Sixth is Ward Burton. Then Ricky Rudd, Jeff Burton, Jeff Gordon, and Terry Labonte. Welcome back. The Duraloop Kmart 400 live on TNN Sports. There is Bobby Hamilton reassumed the lead at lap number 92. He's got the edge over Mark Martin, Ward Burton, Bobby Labonte, and Rusty Wallace. Hey, they killed his wife and kid, but that's not stopping federal agent Lucky Vanis from bringing the bad guys to justice. And he's doing it in his high-speed, high-tech big rig. Catch 18 Wheels of Justice every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, a part of TNN's Action Wednesdays. We're having one of TNN's Action Sundays for you from Rockingham today. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergman. Downstairs, Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen bringing you the coverage from The Rock. We have seen lead changes aplenty, all brought about by one very brief caution period and a ton of green flag pit stops. But you know, we see a lot of lead changes here at Rockingham. Last year, this race produced 25 lead changes. Count it up, do the math. That's a lead change on average every 16 laps. Like I told you at the beginning of the show, I like this place. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> I like Bobby Hamilton's chances too. He is running incredibly well right now. He has five top tens in a row here at Rockingham. One of them a win. And folks who were watching this race in 1996, remember Hamilton had it in the bag until Earnhardt had his front bumper on Hamilton's back bumper, and in the wall he went. And you know why he's so good? Why he's probably that? one of the few drivers out there that can build a race car from the ground up. He, d he builds race cars for the young drivers up in the Nashville area. Helps uh, people like Casey Atwood. He really got him going. So many of the people he's built the motors for. He's done the chassis for different people. Bobby Hamilton is all around race car driver. He's a good race car driver, good mechanic. He's also got a good mindset for this business. Doesn't matter where he starts. When he won here for Richard Petty back in 95, he was 28th in the starting grid. The farthest back that a winner has ever come from here at the Rock. Meanwhile, you watch Bobby Labonte keeping that car wound up to the high side. The Interstate Batteries Pontiac running in fourth right now. Let's check in down on the pit road. Eli, right now, Bobby Labonte is running with a very light fuel load. They did not get all the fuel in the car. Now, how did they know that? You and I checked the gas gauge in our passenger cars, not at Winston Cup racing. They utilize a scale system like this. They weigh the empty cans. Now, an empty can would weigh in at 10 pounds, roughly that. A full can would weigh in at 85 pounds. The one can was empty. Look at what the second can weighed, 65.8 pounds. You can tell they did not get hardly any gas out of that second can into Bobby Labonte's car. Reason being, gas man Peter Jellin had trouble getting the can in while they were making a chassis adjustment to the back of the car. If this was Daytona, it'd be a big problem, Eli. Here, it's a tire situation. We have caution on the speedway. Some debris coming out of the Dave Marcus machine. Looks as though he might have dropped an engine. So caution on the speedway. There is the real tree machine. Dave was running back in 41st position and a plume of smoke. And then the NASCAR observers around the racetrack reporting some debris. So we are under caution. Lap 105 
a problem for Dave Marcus on the real tree camouflage entry as Bobby Hamilton leads here at Rockingham. Don't go away. We're back in a moment. We are back at Rockingham. Mark Martin is the race leader, having beaten everybody off the pit lane. Bobby Hamilton, Ward Burton, Rusty Wallace, and Bobby Labonte, your top five. The field will get the one to go signal as they come by. Dave Marcus has taken his car to the garage area. Uh, either an engine problem, an oil system problem, we'll all find out together in a moment, but Dave Marcus is gone to the garage. To the pit road, Steve Burns. And the four car came in here. Bobby Hamilton was in for service. Four tires, no chassis adjustments. Crew chief Robert Larkin said we didn't change a thing, and we hope not to. But we just heard that their number one ignition box just went out on the four car. They'll have to go to a backup, Ralph Shaheen. Well, here in the 18 pit gas man, Peter Jones, a little bit happy. They wanted that extra pit stop to get things back right with the fuel. They're very happy with that. Now, they can't get any more gas in there if they needed to. They went one pound down in the right front and one or one pound in on the right front, one pound out on the right rear to help get this 18 to turn, Glenn. Well, Ward Burton brought his car in, Ralph, and boy, did that caution ever come at a great time for him. Crew Chief Tommy Baldwin had been in a lengthy discussion with NASCAR ever since he made his green flag stop. The official said that they did not get all the lugs on the left front. Remember, I told you they had problems. Look right here. You can see clearly where there was no lug nut. There was one here, here, and here, but there is no epoxy right here. The official was correct. There was no lug nut, but fortunately, he got to come in under caution, and the NASCAR official was proved right. But as, as thus far, there is no penalty that for that. And Ward Burton had a 16.1 second pit stop. Great pit work and an extremely lucky break. Back under green, Mark Martin is the race leader now at lap 109 here at Rockingham. Darrell Waltrip never came up to speed on that restart. He's backsliding through the field. At number 66 right there, folks going to the high side, to the low side. Or they're passing him on both sides. And when you start down in the corner, somebody's got to check up a little bit. He's not up to full speed for some reason. Also, a little smoke off the right front of the 77 of Robert Presley. Might have gotten tagged by someone on the restart. He had earlier sheet metal damage as well at Presley's car. Hello. Kyle Petty saying, Darrell coming through. And oh, goes boy. Jerry Nadeau, caution on the speedway. The Michael Holligan machine, the Chevrolet spins, and caution out for the third time, lap number 112. Let's get an update on Dave Marcus's problems. Dave Marcus. Eli, Dave Marcus is in the garage. The team is working. Something went through the radiator. They think it came off the number 13 car of Robbie Gordon. Dave Marcus is in the car. Going to change the radiator and see if they can get the veteran back on the racetrack. Well, certainly great news. Dave should be able to return. And obviously a lot of work for that team. You see that air deflector flap that deployed on that 25 of they do there on the roof. Watch what happens again. He's fourth okay. in line on the inside. Okay, it started right up there with Darrell Waltrip. Everybody ah. starts checking up, and he got nailed from behind there. And you can see Nadeau just trying to collect his car back and get it where he can continue on. You can also see him just yeah. missing the water barrels at that infield guardrail, and it was fortunate that he did miss them. Had he hit them, it probably would have been the end of his day. There is Jerry Nadeau, and again, that uh, air deflector flap that is still up in the air. That see it on the roof line. Yeah, that little deal, if I can catch up to it there. And they'll get that back into its normal position. We'll be back to green flag racing. Bobby Hamilton is the race leader. Under caution at lap number 113. Good to see you. Glad you're with us on TNN Sports. Flag is in the air as you are rejoining us here at Rockingham. Lap number 114. Rather, 116 now going up on the board. Bobby Hamilton. The race leader, Mark Martin of the six, right behind it. You know what's remarkable? Bobby Hamilton, who has now led 22 laps today. You know that all of last year, he only led three laps the whole season. He led a couple of laps at Watkins Glen, led one lap late in the year at Charlotte. And today already, 22 laps, he 
has led Ralph. Uh, what a difference a season will make. Yeah, but it almost got real scary for Buddy Hamilton on that last caution, Eli. They had an ignition go bad on that last caution. So he flipped the switch on the ignition box. He's got a second one in the car. He's okay now. Now the 94 Bill Elliott there is trying to get back on the lead lap. He was lapped earlier. This is not for the race lead, but is trying to get back onto the tail end of the lead lap. And should he get a caution flag, he'd then be able to come back on around. There's Bobby Labonte in the 18. And just in front of them, Ward Burton went by this whole group and just took over second, six seconds ago. As hard as they're running this early on for this lead to try to keep Elliott from going getting his lap back again. I, I just wonder if they're abusing their tires at this point, which they should not do early on in a run. Just going out there at this track abuses your tires. The one one thing I'm a little concerned on, Mark Martin, number six, he's dropping back quite a bit. He was in second just a second ago, and now he's all the way back to uh, uh, fourth place now, and you can see the car not on the bottom part of the racetrack at now all. Now that is for position. Hamilton the leader, 22, Ward Burton, they're battling for first and second. Moments ago, you saw the six of Martin, the 18, Labonte, the 24 of Gordon. There they are. They are battling for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Remember, Gordon was a lap down not that long ago, but the way pit stops and cautions have fallen, it's worked to his benefit as we look for the lead change here. Ward Burton, who led laps 35 through 84, trying to grab the lead from the four car, Bobby Hamilton. Very different driving style right now. Ward Burton a little bit loose as he picked the throttle up out of turns two there. Bobby Hamilton running more conservative line on the high side, being a little easier on the tires, but it looks like Burton's got the quicker of the two cars. But Bobby Hamilton holds off that challenge. You see NASCAR timing and scoring being presented by MCI WorldCom. Lap 121 of 393 in the books. It looked like Gord Burton went up there and gave him a real good jingle there and said, well, if you're that good on the high side, I'm not going to tear my tires up. Now further back, Rusty Wallace in the two, Mark Martin in the six. That is for third place. And it's got to be a relief to that 16 to see Mark Martin running as well as they are running. This morning, crew chief Jimmy Fenning told me that they really weren't sure they had that car right. He was still a, a tick or two off every single lap, and they were afraid there was something bent in that car after Martin's excursion into the wall. Looks good now. Further back, you see the 24, Jeff Gordon, the 18, Bobby Labonte. Then the eight, he is not on the lead lap. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's back in 25th position, but his dad, Dale Earnhardt, in the black number three, is on the lead lap in seventh. Dale Earnhardt looks very, very strong right now as far as moving up through the pack. He's moving every lap. You see Skinner there, he's a lap or so down. He got into problems earlier in the race and lost quite a bit of track position. Mike Skinner being shown a lap down in 26th spot. Skinner has never led here. This is his 14th appearance, never led at Rockingham. This guy has, though, Earnhardt, number three. This is one of his best racetracks. And, Ralph, what about Bobby Labonte now? We've been following his story all afternoon. Yes, he lied. It also goes along with what Dick Bergen was talking about. As you take a look off the onboard cameras, you can see the clouds in the sky over the racetrack here in Rockingham. The storm is coming from about 100 miles away to the west in Charlotte. And Bobby has been asking the spotter every 20 or so laps to give him an update on the weather. And Dick, this is why a lot of the drivers are pushing harder. They want to know what the weather is doing. They're really keeping an eye on that halfway point. If you get to halfway, it is an official race, and uh, it would not have to be resumed here tomorrow. As a matter of fact, only once back in 1983 did we start the race on one day, not get to halfway, and then have to come back in that instance a week later to finish it. The Hodgson Carolina 500, as they called the race here back in 1983. Otherwise, you've been able to get them all in, and the halfway is 194. We're now at lap 127. For those of you who don't have your abacus handy, we'll be glad to uh, <laughs> do the ciphering for you. Oh, you want to borrow mine? Oh, sure. <laughs> We're back in a moment with the race lead still in the hands of Bobby Hamilton. Ward Burton is next. The blue skies overhead, but clouds loom in the distance. 
Back with you at The Rock, wrenchhead.com, the online automotive superstore, millions of replacement parts, performance parts and accessories, and free shipping. Wrenchhead.com, parts online all the time. It's a great spot on the World Wide Web, and Buddy says, hey, free shipping, that's for me. <laughs> Glad you're with us. Interesting story today here at The Rock. We've seen lots of cautions, then we've seen early cautions. Tire changes, always a story here. Tire wear. You see the 24, Jeff Gordon, he's running in sixth. The 31, Mike Skinner, still a lap down to 24th. And Gordon is coming to the pit lane. You saw Gordon just peel off the racetrack as the race leader is still Bobby Hamilton by seven tenths of a second on second place, Ward Burton. This stop is at lap 135. Gordon was in at lap 106. So obviously this is a short pit stop. Let's see what Robbie Loomis and the crew will do. Let's go to the pits. Well, Eli, they go to work on the car. No chassis adjustments yet. Now they put around the wedge in. They changed four tires and fuel. The car had been just a little bit tight. They were apparently happy with it. They get the four tires off, gas is in, they're ready to go back in. Meanwhile, Bobby Hamilton has a problem. The leader has a problem going down the back straightaway. Warren Burton takes over the race lead here at lap number 136. Hamilton just called on the radio and said, ignition, ignition, ignition. The crew said, bring it in, bring it in. He is in one of the very first pit stops. Engine trouble for Hamilton. Now remember, he had a problem earlier with the primary ignition box. They've gone to the backup. Now some more problems. Steve Burns is standing right there. Eli, on that last pit stop, they did, in fact, go to their backup ignition box, but now the hood is up on the number four car. Bobby Hamilton is the first car out of the Daytona 500, and it's going to be problems again on the number four car. He could well be the first car out of the Duralube Kmart 400. He led from lap 111 through 136, and Ward Burton now takes over the lead after Bobby Hamilton leads 43 laps in total here this afternoon. So Ward Burton, who led laps 35 through 84, is back at the top of the leaderboard at lap 137. This can be a cruel business. Can imagine what's going on at this moment in Bobby Hamilton's mind. So close, a car clearly capable of winning. They had it all together and look. And look how high Ward Burton just kind of tiptoes through the banking. Well, I can tell you how he feels. He's proud of the car and the way it handled and the way it looked on the racetrack, and they just realize they have to do a little more work. Good race for second place right there. Mark Martin in the six, Rusty Wallace in the two. That battle goes bye-bye in a hurry as Mark Martin grabs second spot away from Rusty Wallace. Rusty led the first 34 laps. Mark Martin has at this point led lap number 88 and then lap 106 through 110. So he has had a touch of the top spot and again you'll see who's turning the fastest laps. I'm interested in seeing Tony Stewart's number because Tony is starting to make some moves right there in that 20 machine challenging Dale Jarrett for eighth place. And the car just tiptoeing now the corner there, a little bit loose in the back, but that gives him great speed in the center part of the corner. You can watch him there. He really gains up on the car in front of him in the center out. For those of you who have been reading the newspapers this week and have read that Tony Stewart's all done with short track racing, forget it. He said, I got bolt cutters. He said, I know that my car to Joe Gibbs <laughs> doesn't want me racing sprint cars and midgets and dirt tracks, but I'm a lousy golfer. I just chew up the golf course. So when I get a mind to it, I got to play my hobby, and Joe understands. Indeed so. Let's go downstairs to Ralph. Eli, the only problem Tony Stewart is reporting as far as the car handling in the corners is the forward bite. He's lacking forward bite on the car, driving out of the very exit of the corner. That's the only spot they're having trouble. They're getting into the corner just great. So as you guys are saying, corners are not a huge problem just yet. It's getting off the corner where he's not too good. Okay, forward bite for the people that don't know. Of course, you guys that do know, listen with me anyhow. What it means is the back tires are getting great grip and that is forward bite. As you lose grip in the back part of the car, that's when the back end starts to move out on it. And I told you, he was tiptoeing out of the corner. You could tell it was a little bit loose, but getting in the corner is going to be great because he's not pushing the front end back. And they knew that this morning, before this race started, that they were going to need more forward bite. 
There's the spread again from Jarrett just underneath our graphic there in the 88 the 20 Stewart that is eighth and ninth as well as they are running they're still eight and a half seconds behind Ward Burton the race leader. Remember that great run that Tony Stewart had here in the NASCAR Bush Series race oh, a few years ago and Matt Kent has got under 80 yards from the finish yep. touched him and of course Matt Kent has won but Tony uh, sure let everybody know that he was going to be a factor at this type of race car. Touched him. Touched him. <laughs> Took him, didn't he? Touched him. Just hit him hard enough, moved him right out of the way. And ironically, Tony Stewart never has won a Boys great, Series race. That was a great finish. That's yeah. what Kale always called it. I just barely touched him. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's why the back bumpers all pushed in, too. <laughs> We're live with you here at The Rock. If you're just joining us, there is not a single car officially out of the event. Dave Marcus is in the garage for 25 laps, replaced a radiator. Bobby Hamilton is being serviced. Now the car is with the ignition problems. Otherwise, everyone is on the racetrack. We have had three caution flags, one at lap 18, when Chad Little, Robbie Gordon, Kenny Irwin tangled off turn number four. Dave Marcus had that radiator problem, lap 105, and Jerry Nadeau spun at lap 112, and everybody kind of checked up around him. Otherwise, we have been clean and green. We have had a castle full of lead changes. Ward Burton is showing the way as we ride around the rock with Robert Presley. Now in the 28th spot, a lap down. Brand new car for Robert Presley, one of five new cars that they have built since Ryan Pemberton joined the team as a new crew chief. Haven't talked about Joe Nimichek today. Why don't we check some of the numbers here and see how he's getting around. He's running in 27th spot, Joe is. He is a lap plus 10 seconds down. I saw 8,500 RPMs there as he was going down the straightaway, so he's pedaling pretty hard right now. Ricky Rudd there in the 28th is 13th right now. Way down in RPM. When he hits a straightaway, that car comes alive. You can see right there, 8,000, 8,500 just at the end of the straightaway. Joe Nimichek, see where his day has gone from, eighth back to 27th. Lap 151, within shouting distance of halfway, is Ricky Rudd picks his way through traffic, as Buddy told you. Still and running in the top 15. And you can see Rick Mast in the 41 car there, unable to keep that car down. It's all these cars just went right on by. Kenny Irwin right there in the Bell South machine. Compare his numbers to what we saw from Joe Nimichek moments ago. Was binding the car up on the low side of the racetrack there. Kenny's in 28th spot. About 8,200 is all he's turning down the straightaway with that particular car. That paint job right there, I'm trying to get used to it uh, that Kenny Irwin has on that car. Last year it was uh, red, white, and blue, uh, more or less. That green, I'm going to get used to that. Matt Kenseth made a pit stop moments ago. You see him in the number 17 car working off the low side of the racetrack. Just back on the speedway after making a stop. But there's the man who doesn't want to stop. Just taking it to the front. Lap 153, Ward Burton, the leader. Race number two of the year. Welcome back, everybody. A great battle for the lead. Ward Burton, Mark Martin. Martin, the winner here yesterday in the NASCAR Bush Series. They're going at it right now in the middle stages of this 400-miler here at The Rock. Well, Mark ran him down for about a full turn back in two or three laps there, but when it got to him, Burton in 22 is running the line that Mark really wants to be in. Hey, folks, as you see the battle for the lead on the top of the screen, remember to find out who has the dead man's gun this week. It's set in the Old West and has big stars, and it's all a part of TNN's Action Wednesdays. Check it out every Wednesday at 8 Eastern and Pacific right here on TNN. Poor old Mark Martin <laughs> trying to tell us Trying to tell us, what does he have? A couple of Winston Cup wins here, 11 NASCAR Bush Series wins. 
and trying to tell us how he just can't drive a Winston Cup car around this race track. You know what? I'd hate to play poker with this guy. Because <laughs> when I heard him talking about that, I said, you know, he won his first ever Winston Cup race right here at the speedway. But he says he spins the rear tires coming out of the corner and with 750 horsepower opposed to, like the Bush car, 200 horsepower less, he really didn't have the driving finesse that he needs as you see him take the lead as we talk. Yeah, so, it's obvious he can't handle this racetrack at all. Uh, just blows right on by for the lead. I'll tell you one thing I did see. He almost tagged the outside wall with right rear corner coming off. I can see what he's talking about. He certainly picked up the throttle hard enough there. But despite what Mark wants to tell you, he has been marvelous here at Rockingham. In the last 17 races, eight top five finishes. That's 47 percent. 14 top tens in his last 17 starts. So folks, when Mark tells you he doesn't do well here in a Winston Cup car, don't believe him. Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, I'm standing in Ward Burton's pits, and I've been listening to uh, he and Tommy Baldwin. Uh, Ward not saying a whole lot. Tommy telling him, take care of the tires. They've got about 15 more laps to run on this set of tires. I've been watching Ward's lap speeds. They've been very consistent. Mark Martin, obviously the only one who was a little quicker. But Ward's got a little bit of a problem. The car's a little tight on new tires. As they go on into the run on that set of tires, the car tends to loosen up off the corner. So uh, they're still scratching their heads trying to figure out how to get it just exactly right. I tell you what, with that little bit of problem, he's still running awfully well. And remember, this is the only place Ward Burton has ever won a Winston Cup race. Here's Ralph. Playing with Mark Martin running up front like he is now, that is 50 laps that he has on this set of tires, and his lap times are still very, very strong. The car is just a little bit tight, crew chief Jimmy Fennick tells me, but obviously not too tight, gentlemen, to keep him from running very strong. So that's the latest on the pit lane as Mark Martin is now the race leader over Ward Burton. The differential is three tenths of a second. That's what three tenths looks like here at the North Carolina Speedway. Right behind them is Bobby Hamilton. There he is. He is back now, Steve, after 22 laps worth of work down there. Was it indeed the ignition? Well, Eli, he had an absolute rocket ship, but we have the offending part here. They had to change the distributor. It's extremely hot to the touch. They changed the distributor and adjusted the set the timing, and he's back on the racetrack, but it was the distributor. Cost him 22 laps and certainly any chance of a win here today. Man, that's bad luck because it's obvious he does have a great race car, but the distributor, I've had a bunch of them go out, and when it goes out, you come in the pits, that's it. You can change about everything in the electrical system except that one piece. By the way, if you're curious, we talked in the pre-race show about Ford, Chevy's, Pontiac, the ongoing argument, who's got what advantage over anybody else. Right now in the top 10, there are four Fords, three Pontiacs, three Chevrolets. So that's as close to uh, parity as you're going to find. Robbie Gordon, there you see his numbers. He's in 37th spot. Robbie was involved in that accident back at lap number 18, the spin, you might remember. He's three laps down. But yeah, four Fords, three Pontiacs, three Chevys in the top ten right now. The Chevy guys are talking at Daytona and here as well, however, that they've got so much downforce in the back, it unbalances the car a little. What they want to do, what they need to do is stick the nose. Look at this race right behind Ward Burton. Rusty Wallace right there in the number two. He'd like to grab second spot away. They go by Brett Bodine in that Ralph's Markets number 11 car. Now Bobby Labonte riding with him. He's in fourth. And the spread now from first to fourth, only two seconds. A lot of people think you're riding with the national champion for this coming year, Bobby Labonte. Everybody says his brother's called the Ice Man, but he really makes very cool moves on the racetrack in that green car there. Running along there, nobody's even talking about him much, but he's right in the action. Meanwhile, Rusty just ahead there makes the move. You saw Ward Burton go way up the banking in the number 22. Rusty grabs the second spot. Oh, and now problems on the pit lane. There had been pit stops seconds ago for Wally Dallenbach. There is no car there, but one of the fuel cans had fallen. You see Mark Martin now scooting. There you see the fuel can and the 76 racing fuel that was accidentally knocked over the pit wall, and the fire crews were immediately there to make sure there was no fire but a scary looking moment there on pit road we remain under green mark martin the leader 
We're at lap 171. Back in a moment. To the Rock, where as often as the case, the action has been hot on the pit lane. Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte's teams doing yeoman's work. Others have had some unscheduled stops to deal with. Crude discussions. Tommy Baldwin says, no, all those luck nuts were on. Bobby Hamilton says, my ignition systems have gone out. Sometimes it's your day, sometimes not. Rusty Wallace has been in. Ward Burton coming in for service now. A host of top teams are in. Let's go to Glenn. And Rusty Wallace just brings his middle light forward in for a pit stop. Uh, this is a regularly scheduled stop. Four tires and fuel. I haven't seen any adjustments on the car. They haven't really touched Rusty's car all day other than a few minor air pressure adjustments. He likes the way that the car feels. The left side is just now going on a little bit slow in the left front. The left rear has already done his down in the way. I got him at about 19.3. That's uh, uncharacteristically slow for Rusty Wallace. I'll also tell you, while we were away, Ward Burton also stopped and uh, put four tires on. So all of these stops taking place under green. Bobby Labonte's in. Dale Earnhardt is on the pit lane. This is at lap number 180. Tony Stewart is in. Ward Burton, we told you, was in earlier. Brett Bodine in for service. Let's follow last year's NASCAR Rookie of the Year down the pit road as we also check in on Bobby Labonte. Bobby Labonte is in. They have a very slight push in the car. the 17.1 second stop here now come other stops John Andretti is in so too Joe Nimichek here comes Mark Martin the race leader will come down the pit lane so Steve Park will take over the top spot Kenny Wallace is in for service all of these stops are scheduled lap 182 oh look Robbie Gordon having trouble getting out in behind Dale Jarrett's machine oh they almost made contact there Ted Musgrave coming on the pit lane, started 39th. He's driving Jeffrey Bodine's power team machine up to 15th right now at the time of the pit stop. And there's Mark Martin, who just hands the lead over to Steve Park. And now Park is coming down the pit road himself. Let's go to Ralph. We're waiting for Steve Park to make his way down pit road. The drivers have to rely on the spotters to let them know where their pit stalls are because it is a blind curve that they come around to their stall. They take one of the windshield screens off, they change tires on the right side, and now they go to work on the left side. Now they're gonna end a little slow on the front. They've already got the left rear off. The left front gets caught up, no adjustments to the chassis, and he's away. 21 second stop, a little slow in those front tires. Jeff Gordon is now the race leader as everyone begins to make pit stops. There's Mike Skinner, and he's being held by the NASCAR officials. I think one of the tires had gotten loose there, and Skinner now peels out in 20 seconds. You see those numbers on the wall right there? There's what pit road now looks like. It circles, buddy, over towards turns one and two. And that's new last year. <laughs> It is thankfully far more symmetrical than that last little <laughs> diagram, but you get the idea. In the old days, you used to pit on the front stretch and the back stretch, and you see this wall right here. Inside that wall, you might just see some numbers that have been painted on the wall. As the drivers come around the wall, they can look on the outside pit wall, and those numbers are directly across from their pit stall. It's a, it's a tough way to have to get on a pit road. And the other thing that they do, the crew chiefs will also talk the drivers in. They'll tell them you're 15 stalls away, 10, 8, 6, 3, and so forth. And that helps them find the stall because they really can't see it because that turn is too dark. Now remember, we're seeing oh, oh, we have Jeff, Fuller. Oh, wow. Jeff Fuller in the wall on the back straightaway. Caution on the speedway. Caution is coming out at lap 187 as Jeff Fuller a NASCAR Winston Cup rookie tags the wall. Boy, Jeff Gordon really got a break there. He hadn't made a stop yet. He had not yet made a stop while everybody else came in under the green. So this is really going to be a major shot in the arm for the DuPont team. Matt Kenseth 
in the 17. You saw him drag racing back, trying to get one of his laps back. But again, Jeff Fuller tags the wall, brings out the caution for the fourth time today. And as though he needs any extra special intervention, little good luck never hurt anybody. Jeff Gordon is the leader. Back, everybody. Pet stops the name of the game as things cycle around here at lap 190. Steve Park had a very quick pit stop. Jeff Gordon, good service. Jeff Burton, Sterling Marlin, and Ward Burton all came in. Again, most of the field pitted under caution. Jeff Gordon was able to come in under the green, though Steve Park is the race leader. Good work by the crew. By the way, where he's were under caution, we showed you earlier, Jeff Fuller came off the corner and all of a sudden found the wall looming just ahead. And here's what it looked like to the Winston Cup rookie. Back in a moment to the girl. He said, come on, let's walk down the aisle together. Of course, she didn't know he meant the aisle between sections 107 and 108 at the racetrack, but they are just married. Congratulations. Love at the Rock. This guy loves The Rock, too, Jeff Gordon. He's had things going very much his way over his career here at Rock and Ham, over his career in general. Now, we talked about how great the pit work was for Gordon and for the whole bunch, for Ward Burton, Jeff Burton, Sterling Marlin, everybody. But as great as your pit work is, if the other guy doesn't pit, you're still going to come out on the racetrack in second. So with Steve Park staying out, as we mentioned, and Gordon's bunch doing a fine job, Jeff will be second. The teams that did lose a lap on that exchange were Michael Waltrip, John Andretti, Terry Labonte lost a lap. So did Kenny Schrader. Ted Musgrave lost a lap during the uh, yellow and or the green flag stops followed by the quick caution. Uh, others also, uh, Kevin LePage lost a lap. They were on the lead lap prior to the last round of pit stops but find themselves a lap down now. But uh, otherwise, Jeff Gordon was able to make a stop under caution, but Steve Park stayed on the racetrack and is now the race leader. There you see the clouds overhead, but we should easily get to halfway, and certainly that's only four laps away, and the sun is still out over much of this racetrack, so it uh, looks as though for the time being we should be okay as far as weather is concerned. My bunions are not saying that there's any <laughs> weather anywhere within a 100-mile radius. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Come back with the restart. Three laps shy of halfway here at the Rock. Steve Park is the leader. Back in a moment. Park is the race leader. Remember, folks, he was ninth in points scored over the second half of the 99 season last year. Second half of the year, it was quite a year, quite a second half of the season for Steve Park. You see Jack Roush down there with crew members from other teams all discussing a matter of alignment on the racetrack with NASCAR officials. Let's check in with Ralph Shaheen as we're about set to get the one to go signal. Eli, the number one car, Steve Park, is the one machine that did not pit during that caution. Reason being, he had pitted under green just three laps before and took on fresh tires then. They're happy with that car. They're running pretty good. That's why they stayed out on the racetrack. Now, Jeff Gordon, he had already, on his last set of tires, was having a little trouble getting the car to turn the front end early in the run, but it got better and better as the run went on. He was really good in the middle of the corner, a little loose getting in and a little loose getting out at the end of that run. So they left everything pretty much just as it was. They had talked about making a change to it. They had taken one round out on the pit stop before. They decided that's the way they're going to stay, Steve Burns. Ralph Jeff Fuller sits inside the number 27 Viagra car. Meanwhile, the crew, led by Barry Dotson, hard at work. The major damage is to the right front suspension parts of this car. The uh, spindle assembly, brake pad, a lot of those parts are just smashed and bent, and they're going to have to make some serious repairs to the number 27. All right, guys, thank you very much as we get set to go back to green here at the Rock Sunshine, now brightly beating down upon this one-mile racetrack. At number 170, 
197 on the board. We've reached halfway. A folks reminder, if you love the movie The Magnificent Seven, now you'll love the weekly series The Magnificent Seven. They hand out justice every Wednesday night at 10 Eastern and Pacific time, a part of TNN's Action Wednesdays. Now here's some action for you on Sunday afternoon. Back to green, Steve Park, the race leader. The 31, Mike Skinner to his inside, trying to get one of the two laps back, and he is in arrears. Our wall camera brought to you by Minus. Go safely, go Minus. Goodbye quickly. And this is the first time Steve Park has ever led a Winston Cup lap here at Rockingham. Big day for Park to be running up front. He's had a tough time here at Rockingham in Winston Cup competition. Never finished on the lead lap. Looking awful good right now. Jeff Gordon right behind him and Jeff Burton in the 99. That's for second spot. Burton, that red number eight, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he is not on the lead lap. He is a couple of laps down in 24. Yes, but he's running pretty well right now. We're riding with him down the back straightaway here. Just to the left there, Burton. Jeff Gordon on the outside, he's trying to figure who's going to go fastest, and he follows uh, the 24 there, Jeff Gordon, off the corner. As we look at Jeff Gordon, let me remind you of his strange history in this race. He has won every one of these February races at Rockingham that he has finished, but he has failed to finish for the seven. Three wins, four DNS. He's either in victory lane or in the garage. Lap two on one of three. That's the view you get if you've got a front row seat here at Rockingham. Well, the car we're not talking about right now is really on the move. It's the 22 there of Ward Burton. He is flying up through this traffic. Here he is in fifth place right now, only one and two ten seconds behind the leader. And obviously, if you're with us earlier, you know that Ward was one of the dominant cars. Leading laps 35 through 84, and again 137 through 161. Ward Burton has come so close to winning on so many occasions. One of them here in October finished second to his brother. It was the third time he finished second to his brother in 1999. Got out of the car and he was just so distraught. I mean, you could read it all over his face. This looks like a better day. Riding with Bobby Labonte down the front straightaway. You see, the sun's not a problem in the windshield yet. Later on in the day, if the clouds don't get here, that's a real problem getting into turn one. The sun is right in your face going into turn one. Remember we showed you that discussion before where Jack Roush was down there, different crew members uh, going jaw to jaw with some of the NASCAR officials. Ralph, did you find out what that was all about? Well, Eli, we had an opportunity to talk to Jack Roush, and apparently the discrepancy is over the number 16 car of Kevin LePage, which fits inside the Roush stables. Jack thought that the car should be scored on the lead lap, and apparently the monitors or where NASCAR put the 16 car once the race restarted did not go along with what Jack felt it should have been. So that's where the discrepancy is. LePage is being shown a lap down in 22nd position. This is 11th place on the screen. The 88 Dale Jarrett haven't talked about him much since early. He'll work inside of Mark Martin. You've got the 28 of Ricky Rudd battling for 11th, 12th, 13th. Everybody's been making major adjustments on the cars every time they stop. It seems that uh, Dale Jarrett's car is a lot better than it was at the first part of the race, as well as the 28 that you're riding with right at the moment, Ricky Rudd. This kind of mimics last week for Ricky. Both races started on the front row, and both weeks he's, he's been in the hunt, but not among the top two or three. He backslid last week, and again here today to some degree. Seems to be the same problem. He's pushing both times. Uh, the nose of the car just won't stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Those who ride with Dale Jarrett, you got to think about him winning two and a half billion dollars last week. Next week he goes to Las Vegas. He said for the first time ever he's going to bring his golf club. Reason? He doesn't want to spend any time in the casino with that amount of money <laughs> in his checkbook. So he's going to go out and play golf and stay out of the casino. The 24 and the 99. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, second place battle. Gordon's been climbing the banking all day. That's nothing new. But he does keep that Chevy wound up, that's for sure. Also saves the tires. 
Morton knows a lot about tire management from all his dirt track racing. Right now, though, the 99 of Jeff Burton is able to hang right on that white line around the bottom. While Jeff Gordon goes up, he'll get a better run off the corner, but look at the 99 get that forward bite off the corner. The 99 is the same exact car Burton drove to victory here last year. Ball race, that's a good race car. Second place, still up for grabs. They are now two and one tenth seconds behind Steve Park, the race leader. And just behind these guys, the 22 and Ward Burton is now trying to make it maybe three wide if they keep running like this. You see the 22 car there on the inside, Sterling Marlin in the 40 on the outside. That is fourth position as well. The 43 STP car right behind, we told you, lost the lap during that pit stop exchange earlier. First car a lap down now in 15th spot is John Andretti. You can see the green car of Bobby Labonte show up in these pictures as well. He is running in sixth spot. Labonte, third, both races last year. Led both races last year. He's won a pole here. About the only thing he hasn't done here is win a race. He's overdue as well. Riding with Bobby Labonte in sixth. Middle stages of the Duralube Kmart 400 here at The Rock. Now a new feature of our telecast. We call it Sitco You Know Me. See how sharp you are. You know me. I was a former track champion at the South Boston Speedway in my home state of Virginia. I won five NASCAR Busch Series races driving for Diamond Ridge Motorsports. And I was the Winston Cup runner-up for Rookie of the Year last season. You know me. We'll be back to introduce one of NASCAR's up-and-coming young stars right after this from Sitco. You know me. I drive the number 21 Sitco Ford for the Wood Brothers. I'm Elliot Sadler. You know me. A new sponsor and feature on our telecast brought to you by your neighborhood Sitco. And you know me, I'm Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race here at Rockingham. I've just made a pass around Steve Park to grab the top spot. Welcome back, everybody. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergman, Glenn Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen, Steve Burns. And yes, Jeff Gordon is the new race leader. And Steve Park may lose second now to the 99 of Jeff Burton. Park's car is beginning to walk up the racetrack. Jeff Burton right now has a great race car, but the problem is he and, and uh, Gordon are running about the same groove around the racetrack. It's going to be tough for him to pass Gordon. Now, Park's not going to be content letting that Burton car get by him. He's trying him on the bottom again. And look at the 22 back in the picture. Here comes Ward Burton again. We've told you he's been lurking there all day long. Seconds ago. As you see, Ward Burton challenging, and that's in your upper left-hand corner where it's live. Watch the bottom right, that pass for the lead. Gordon gets in the corner very hard, lets the car drift up. They would call that sliding into position because he actually took the spot away from the one car there, Steve Park. He had to back out the throttle because Gordon was watching up the racetrack. And if you're keeping stats with us at home, Gordon led lap 183 through 189. Steve Park led 190 through 220, and Jeff Gordon retakes the lead, lap 221. Look at that. Jeff he's Burton got it. Yeah, he's got his hands him. full yeah. with Jeff Burton, and look at this fight for third, fourth, and fifth spot. 18, Bobby Labonte, the quiet one. He just sits there and picks them off. Well, look at this. And look at this. A Chevy and a Ford for the lead. And slow cars in front of them, so this is going to be a drag race off the corners. They're side by side down the back straightaway. You see lap traffic just ahead of them. Jeff Burton had to fall back. So Jeff Burton now picks that higher groove. There goes Robert Presley to the garage area. He'll join Jeff Fuller as the only retirees to the moment. The Jasper Engines and Transmissions team going behind the wall. So the leader is still Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton running in second, Ward Burton third, Bobby Labonte fourth. All of that rundown brought to you by Napa. We keep America running and they keep that scoring 
rundown coming your way. Gordon's got his hands full right now, trying to keep Burton back there. He is running high on the racetrack, and just doing all he can, but he's also got Skinner in front of him. He can't really pick exactly where he might like to run. And Skinner's a pretty good race car, using a pretty good line around there, or a good mirror one, because he is keeping Gordon at bay. And Jeff Burton takes a look, but Ward Burton now in third place. He's caught the two front cars. Now pick your favorite as they go by. Probably know the paint schemes by now. Up front, meanwhile, there goes the lead battle again. Jeff Burton won here last fall. Look, he's just going to ride Gordon up the banking. Gordon fighting back. Oh, he takes the line right away from him. So Jeff Burton brings his brother along with him, and Gordon is back to third. So from lap 221 to 228, Jeff Gordon leads. Then Jeff Burton takes over the top spot as they work on the lap car of Mike Skinner. Now Ward takes the outside behind Skinner there, pulls even with his brother. As they start off the corner, this is going to get awful tight. They don't do three wide off the corner like that. You can see his brother Jeff just roll out the front and give Ward the racetrack. He knows he has a great race car. They'll contend this later on, but he gives his brother a real break right there. So Ward's got the lead. Jeff Burton now in second. Then the great Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte battle behind them. <laughs> Look at Labonte. Oh boy, on the bottom, Bobby Labonte. So not a good couple of miles for Jeff Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Goes from first spot back to fourth. There are 39 other guys who'd love to be where he is. Got to keep that in mind. Bobby Labonte just, he, he amazes me in traffic. He just waits on other people to make a mistake, and he capitalizes on it. He was in the trouble when they were sliding. 16 lead changes already in this event. Lots of action up front, just as expected here at Rockingham. And a car just joined the fray here. You can look just behind this group here as they fight for position. Rusty Wallace has moved in. Rusty driving PC-10, the car that finished fifth here in October of last year. There he is at the back of the line. Last series of pit stops, lap 188. we are now some 45, 46 laps further down the road. Let's give Sterling Marlin a real call here in the 40 car. Yeah. He's fighting pretty hard right now with Jeff Burton trying to take that spot away. And I say that, Jeff Gordon pulls up the side of it. And this is all for position with the exception of the 31 Mike Skinner. He is not on the lead lap. Everybody else you've seen in these pictures is, and it's all for position up front. Here goes Gordon. Man, look at that. Here comes Rusty. These guys are side by side, and you know, right now, it seems to me like the racetrack might be getting a little bit better grip, so the cars are not sliding quite as bad as they were when the, when the sun was out. The pace has picked up quite a bit, I think. And the crowd has picked up, too. They're into it. You see yeah. them on their feet, waving their arms in the air, cheering their favorite son. How about Tony Stewart? He's moved in now, just flying in that 20 car at the orange car right there. He's in seventh spot, moving up around Rusty Wallace to grab sixth now. This is what NASCAR Winston Cup racing is all about. Uh -huh. I've been waiting a little while for this. <laughs> <laughs> and you got Earnhardt right in here as well. There he is in the upper portion of your screen. He's right in there also. Tony Stewart and one guy that he really likes to race with, Jeff Gordon, just in front of him. When these guys get together, believe me, they go at it. Remember Ward Burton, clearly the best car here last fall but didn't get out of the pits in front, killing his shot at the win. It's the same car, same setup today, and the same scenario. Welcome back to Rockingham, where Ward Burton had the lead when you left. You come back, and it's Bobby Labonte showing the way. Pontiacs have done well here habitually, winning 10 of the last 24 races. And that Grand Prix pacing the field right now took over the top spot at lap 241. So Bobby Labonte now showing the way here at the Rock. 
Here's how that pass unfolded seconds ago while you watch the live action on the upper left. Watch the replay on the lower right. Bobby Labani able to hold a lot tighter line around the racetrack. Right on the white line goes by Ward, Ward Burton in the 22 car. Made it look pretty easy, but they do that in this part of the race. If they see a car that's a little quicker, they'll let him go right now. If they tend to go, it'll be a real war. You know, you were talking earlier at the broadcast, buddy, about how a lot of people think Bobby Labonte could be the year 2000 champion. Just take a look at some of his numbers as he ended the 99 season. He led the final 11 races of the year. He led the most laps in the last two. He was first, second, or third in the final four races. And at Daytona this year, well, when I was a kid, they used to talk about non-Ford, you know? Uh -huh. The first non-Ford in the field was, those were the Chevys. He was the first non-Ford at Daytona. So he's off to a good start. Bobby Labonte shows the way. Ward Burton, then Jeff Burton in order as you ride with Jeff to the inside of his brother. Glenn Jarrett, this must be something to watch down on pit road, too. Well, it is, Elon. You know, I think that uh, the people in NASCAR have got to be loving what they're seeing right now. Right now in the top ten, you got three Pontiacs, three Chevrolets, uh, excuse me, four Chevrolets, and three Fords. So there is no manufacturer uh, advantage one way or the other here. This is about as good a mix among manufacturers as I have seen in a long, long time. So all the uh, uh, the crying and the hollering and the uh, begging that was going on at Daytona, you're not hearing that this week at the Rock because, man, every, every make of automobile is represented up there in the top 10. Look at the right front of the XI Ford. Look at that old uh, Jeff Burton's uh, left the calling card somewhere. If you're going to have a problem, you want to ding it in like that. That'll actually give it more downforce on that right front corner. The only problem is the edge of the hood is sticking out, which will create a little lift. Those two fellas right there, Ward and Jeff Burton, one of the two sets of brothers who have won NASCAR Winston Cup races here at Rockingham. The others, Bobby and Donnie Allison. Of course, if Bobby Labonte could pull it off today, he'd join Terry, who's won here a couple of times. Hey, look at that orange number 20. Here comes Tony Stewart again. Fourth place, he and Jeff Gordon mixing that up, and here comes Earnhardt in the Somebody, three. Somebody's putting the injection into that three, too. He's coming to life. I tell you right now, Earnhardt's on the move, and he's running anywhere he wants to. High, low. Look at that car go on the outside. He's got a nice rhythm going into the corner, the way he let that thing drift up. And that was an interesting graphic. You saw Jeremy Mayfield that last lap. Actually, quickest of all the cars on the racetrack, and Jeremy is running in 12th. So a good quick lap for Jeremy Mayfield. Johnny Benson in the 10 there with the new sponsorship from last, last week in Daytona. Benson running in 14th spot. Still lots of racing to go here at Rockingham. Bobby Labonte by one and eight tenth seconds is the race leader. But there's much to come. Don't go away. He used to lead here at Rockingham or within a handful of laps of most of the top teams electing to make their pit stops. Don't forget if you're looking for action on Wednesdays, you've come to the right place. There's Dead Man's Gun, 18 Wheels of Justice, and the Magnificent Seven. Don't miss TNN's Action Wednesdays. It all starts at 8 Eastern and Pacific. Wednesdays right here on TNN. And pit stops. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s in. Jimmy Spencer's in. Kevin LePage is in. And we're going to be closing in on Ward Burton coming in soon. And I won't just let everybody know, anybody in the, in the grandstand that even has black socks on is standing up now because Dale Earnhardt has moved to second place. Oh, uh, Earnhardt on the move. Now one second behind the race leader. Mark Martin having to skate that car through the corners just a little bit. Watch what happened a lap ago on the lower right of your screen. Whoa, Whoa, baby. Well, that's just exactly what he said yesterday in this interview. Ward Burton on pit road. So Ward Burton says enough is enough. When his tires go away, they've been going away in a hurry. His car's been climbing the banking. He's lost a goodly bit of distance. He's in lap 258. Michael Waltrip comes in behind him as well. All of these are scheduled stops. We have had nothing on the track since a caution at lap 187. Nothing to slow the pace. So these are all scheduled stops. Glenn? 
Yeah, and this time they're making a chassis adjustment uh, to the right rear of the car, putting a little bit of bite in it. Ward was complaining at that time in the traffic he was running in. The car was very, very loose. They did a great job on the right side there, guys. This looks like a quicker pit stop. Wow, we got him at about 17-1. Uh, My watch actually had him a little bit quicker than that, to about 16-5. So somewhere in there, that's a good pit stop. Outstanding stop for Ward Burton. That, folks, is the approaching rain behind the racetrack here at Rockingham. How quickly does it get here? Well, only one guy knows, and he's not telling. Here's Mark Martin. He and Mike Skinner in for service. These stops at lap 260. So everybody again with one eye on the racetrack, one on the sky. Well, Mark was sliding coming up out of the corners. He'll love the tires right now. You see him jacking up the right side, putting the right side tires on the car. Now this is for the lead. But Robbie Gordon had the inside groove covered in the 13 car. Took away that opening for Dale Earnhardt. Man, I'm telling you, he's getting in the corners like that car's got brand new tires on it. But he does not. This is at the end of the cycle on the tires, so he has that car really hooked up. Bobby Labonte pulls over. Earnhardt leads. He's got it. So Dale Earnhardt, but can he hang on to it? He's run up behind Kyle Petty. Take my word for it. He's leading right now. <laughs> Ted Musgrave in the 60 in relief of Jeffrey Bodine. Dale Earnhardt takes the lead at lap 262. Boy, it's getting dark around the racetrack here. I think Earnhardt looked up and said, I better get going. Dale Jarrett in for service, running in eighth place. Everybody in now making scheduled stops. All of this at lap 261. Tony Stewart down the pit road. He was running fourth. Dale Earnhardt, we told you, finished 40th and 41st here last year. As a matter of fact, he only had three DNFs as he comes in the pit with Bobby Labonte behind him. Earnhardt only had three races in which he did not finish a year ago, and two of them were here. Jeff Gordon takes over the lead as Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte pit Steve Burns. Dale Earnhardt has a nice, clean shot. Both cars on either side of him have already pitted. Crew Chief Kevin Hamlin told me they have been trying to suddenly loosen the car up all day long. Dale is saying it's just a little bit tight in the center of the corner. Other than that, it's driving very well. Four tires for Dale Earnhardt. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Bobby Labonte is in taking on four tires in fuel. He started off tight on the run, but it really started to come around at the end. He will exit pit road right behind Dale Earnhardt. You see Jeff Gordon there in the number 24. He's in. Sterling Marlin takes over the race lead. Let's go to pit road. Jeff Gordon is in now getting service done on the 24. They will make a chassis adjustment just to have a turn there. They will change four tires and fill the bottom with fuel. This service just about complete as they go to work on the left side of the car. Gordon down off the jacket away. 18.3 seconds for the 24. Now Sterling Marlin is pitted. Steve Park is in to make a pit stop now. So that will give Park the lead on pit road as he picks up the lead going across the start finish line, albeit on pit road. That line technically continues all the way across the racetrack. Then things should cycle back on around towards Ward Burton as he comes around and would bypass Steve Park, who sits on the pit lane. Dave Marcus making a stop. If you're a Jeff Fuller fan, after the problem he had earlier tagging the wall, he's back on the track, 53 laps down. But the Viagra car back out there, 53 laps down. All right, Ward Burton now takes over the lead after Marlin and Park make their pit stops. So the lead now, Ward Burton. That second, third, and fourth you were looking at there, Earnhardt. Bobby Labonte is just behind him, Tony Stewart. These guys are absolutely flying around the racetrack. But the 22 there, Ward Burton, he has a good lead. About a half a turn from what I can see up here over second place. I'd be about three and seven tenths seconds. Jerry Nadu in the 25 goes by to the inside. Nadu is in 29th, three laps down. So right now, the running order, let's set it for you so you know what your favorites are. Ward Burton is the leader. Bobby Labonte is second. Then Dale Earnhardt third. Tony Stewart is fourth. Jeff Burton is now fifth. 
Mark Martin is running sixth. Jeremy Mayfield up to seventh. Dale Jarrett is eighth. Rusty Wallace ninth. Sterling Marlin is tenth. We've got Jeff Gordon in eleventh. He's nine and a half seconds back. Ricky Rudd is in twelfth. And then you've got Johnny Benson, and you'll start getting to those cars who are just now coming off pit road, like Steve Hart. Robert Presley is done for the day. Ignition failure. You saw the number 77 go to the garage earlier. He will not be coming back. So Robert Presley, the first official retiree of today's race. Earnhardt dropping back just a little bit. His car is not as quick as Tony Stewart's own fresh tires. Now as the run goes along, Earnhardt's car comes to him. But right at, on the get-go, it looks like the uh, Pontiacs are a little bit quicker than Dale Earnhardt on fresh rubber. As you see, Ward Burton lead this race. There certainly are a lot of people cheering this guy on, want to see him win his second ever career Winston Cup race. But a lot want to see Bill Davis' owner win, too. He is second. We're live at Rockingham. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the North Carolina Speedway. The Mark Martin fans are waving, but the Ward Burton fans are waving with just a tick more pride right now as their man is the race leader. Let's take a look back now and see who's where and bring up the speed on your favorite driver. Obviously, there is Ward Burton, the number 22 car. He is the race leader. And right behind him, the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. That's Bobby Labonte. He's now running in the second spot. The 16 is Kevin LePage. He's in 20th position, a couple of laps down. The 8 is Dale Earnhardt Jr., a couple of laps down in 21st spot. You've also got the Bobby Hamilton machine, who's being shown some 22 laps down in 40th after the ignition problems of earlier. Those are those cars as they work through the corner here at the North Carolina Speedway. Again, we showed you Kevin LePage. Further back, some of the other top runners. There's Tony Stewart going beneath the graphic. Tony is right now being shown among the leaders in third spot, but he is a second and a half down. Jeff Burton in the number 99. He is two seconds back, running in fourth spot. Bill Elliott, not talked much about the 94 today. Awesome Bill is in 31st position. He's three laps down to the race leader in the McDonald's machine. There's Dale Earnhardt running in fifth. He's 2.2 seconds back. Brett Bodine, he's running car number 11 in 35th position. He is five laps in arrears right now. Hasn't had major problems, just hasn't been able to quite hang with the race leaders. Matt Kenseth, after problems earlier in the day, he's 37th now, running some five laps in arrears. Further back, you see Jeremy Mayfield. He's now in sixth place. He's five and four tenths seconds back. There's Mark Martin running in seventh spot, car number six. Dale Jarrett running in eighth place, car number 88. There's seven seconds behind the race leader. Then you circle further back. There's number two, Rusty Wallace. He is in ninth. He's 10 seconds back. Sterling Marlin, car number 40. He is in 10th place. And the 41 is Rick Mast. He's in 32nd spot, Mast is. He's three laps in arrears. 75, Wally Donnan back right now. He's on the racetrack in 22nd spot. The 44 is Kyle Petty. Kyle is in 33rd position, three laps down. 24 is Jeff Gordon. He runs with the leaders in 11th spot. And Gordon is now better than 12 seconds behind the race leader. Five, Terry Labonte. He's running in 23rd position. You see Ricky Rudd in the 28 car. Ricky is in 12th. 31 is Mike Skinner, who's been down a couple of laps all day. He's in 24th position. You saw Ed Barrier and Musgrave Barrier in the 90, Musgrave in the 60. Ted is now in 25th spot, three laps down. 43, John Andretti. He's a couple of laps down in 15th spot. Dave Marcus back on the racetrack, 25 laps down after a lengthy stay in the garage. There's Kenny Schrader in the number 36 M&M's machine. He's in 16th, a lap behind. Robbie Gordon, after the accident early in the day, is now in 39th spot. He's being shown some nine laps in the rears. Again, we circle around the racetrack. Number seven is Michael Waltrip. He's in 17th spot a couple of laps back. And then you have the number nine machine of Stacy Compton. He's five laps down in 34th position. All of this at lap 285. Around again, we come to Ed Barrier. We saw him a little bit earlier. And he's back in 36th position now, some five laps down. 
There's Darrell Waltrip in car number 66 after qualifying in the top 10. DW has slid back to 38th position now. He is nine laps down to our race leader, who's now Bobby Labonte. There's Chad Little in the number 97 car. He's in 18th spot, two laps behind the race leader. 21 is Elliott Sadler. The Wood Brothers car that has had good runs here over the years, now in 26th spot, three laps down. The one is Steve Park. He's led today. He's running in 13th position, Park is. And he'll be some 12 seconds behind the leader. And there's Kenny Wallace in the square D car, 27th place. He's three laps down. Then we come back to the race leader, Bobby Labonte, who paces the field at lap 287. Not only that, his teammate has moved all the way up to second. Tony Stewart just behind him in the number 20 car. Then it's Ward Burton, Jeff Burton, and Dale Earnhardt. Back in a moment. Bobby Labonte showing the way here at Rockingham. If you're curious about the rookies, none of them really doing exceedingly well right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the highest running rookie in 18th spot. Stacy Compton and all the rest are back behind 33rd position. Compton, Barrier, Matt Kenseth, Jeff Fuller. So uh, as The Rock will do, rookie or veteran alike, actually, it is not uh, being particularly friendly to some of the newcomers. So Bobby Labonte continues to run off. Meanwhile, it is time right now for the next TNN installment of Lifestyles of the Fast and Famous. Robin Leach unable to join us today, but certainly <laughs> Ralph Shaheen is here to ably fill his boots. Ralph? You know, Eli Winston Cup car of Felix Sabatis has always been known to be uh, pretty flashy with his lifestyle around the Winston Cup garage. He's got the beautiful coach here. Look at the nice walkway and the plants and the flowers and all that set up just outside of his coach. Well, they're keeping up with the Joneses, or should we say Sabatis's in this case. How about your own pond at the back here? You got four basic goldfish and a 70 inch pond to keep things going, just so you can feel right at home. Now, Eli, we don't have a pool here, but you know, the pond might be good for you. You know how good those babies would be with a little shake and bake on them? <laughs> oh, oh. That is something down there. Leave it to Felix. That's a lot like a TV compound right there. The, yeah, <laughs> all the amenities down there. Glad you're with us, folks. Trying to give you all the sights and sounds of racing here at the Rock. Pit stops taking place as we are in that window again of Final pit stops. You'll see who's quickest right now. Dale Earnhardt turning the fastest lap at the line. Look at those numbers. Bobby Labonte, the race leader, third fastest the last time by. Bobby Hamilton's in for service. Kevin LePage in for service. Jeff Fuller making a pit stop. All of this under the green. And as you see, just 81 laps from the finish. This final round of pit stops will be incredibly important. Any mistake at all on pit road, and there's just no time to make up for it. Right now, the crews are going to earn their money these last rounds. Watch this. And the one thing you pray for when you pull down pit road here with the time you lose getting down pit road and making your pit stop is no caution. If a guy stays out there, he could win this race because he stayed out and didn't come down pit road. So it's very crucial that everybody stop under the green. Jeff Burton running in the sixth spot, Glenn. He's 15 seconds behind the leader. Yeah, Eli, and he's falling further and further behind. They've got an engine problem on the 99. They're not exactly sure what it is, but Jeff's lap times have fallen off way, way, they're much slower than what they were. You see Dale Jarrett going by him right now. Jeff definitely has a problem. He says the engine is not missing, but it runs very, very flat. I talked to the engine guy who's here in the pits, and he said that he thought that it might be a valve spring. So a uh, tough break. Jeff Burton had a great run going, but uh, it's going sour on him right now. Well, Jared Adams, Jeff Gordon, both going by while Glenn was giving you that update. You know, it's amazing. I can't help thinking about that piece that Ralph just showed us. You know, it's not that many years ago that if you had any kind of an airplane, you know, an Aztec or something like that, I mean, you were king of the hill. Then if you didn't have a king air, you were nothing. Then if you didn't have a jet, you're nothing. Now you got to have all of that plus the, the pond outside the motorhome. Can you imagine me telling Bud Moore to bring my koi to the racetrack <laughs> <laughs> for my pond? <laughs> there is an ongoing battle for sixth spot right now. Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett. And not all that far behind is the race leader, Bobby Labonte. There he is, coming off turn number four to put another lap on the board. 
Getting down towards the finish. We're back to Rockingham in a moment. Bobby Labonte showing the way here at the Rock Lap 322. Dale Earnhardt now in second, three and a half seconds back, having bypassed Tony Stewart, who is third. Ward Burton is fourth. Dale Jarrett is now in fifth, moving Jeremy Mayfield back to sixth. But Bobby Labonte, after taking over the lead, doing well. We're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. What did he have an interesting uh, <laughs> little lap a few moments ago? I think he probably uh, he and Marcus got a little closer as friends just a few seconds ago. Watch what happens here, lower right of your screen. You watch Earnhardt Jr. Pardon me. <laughs> Dave that was, Marcus. That was an educational experience. Jeremy Mayfield is now on the pit lane as we're back live. See how the rookies are doing. Rusty Wallace on pit road right now. Mayfield leaving the pit lane while Rusty Wallace comes in. Wally Dallenbach making his stop. Jeremy Mayfield was fifth and ninth here last year and was running in fifth before making a pit stop moments ago. As a matter of fact, Jeremy has only finished out of the top 20 twice in all the races he's run here at Rockingham. He was 34th in the fall of 96, 29th in the fall of 98. You know, I'm just wondering right now, Rusty Wallace just made a pit stop, take on fresh tires. I just wonder if that might be a chance to really get the momentum going because these cars are out on worn tires and earlier in the race, that was a big factor. Well, fresh tires are worth as much as a second and a half a lap. And here comes Jeff Gordon in the pits and also Ricky Rudd getting fresh tires. Mark Martin in as well. This is lap 326 for these pit stops. Clearly within the window to go the distance. Ralph, the Rainbow Warriors are ready. They are, Eli, up on the wall getting set to go. And here comes Jeff Gordon to a stop. They will pull off one of the windshield. No, they'll just clean the windshield this time. Doesn't look like they're going to make any chassis adjustments. Just change tires on both sides of the car and fill them up. What, Jerry? In. We're waiting on Ward Burton to come in. Ricky Rudd is in right now. Rudd has been the fastest car on the track here of late. Uh, the the uh, 28 car is in for four tire change. Uh, just a slight air pressure adjustment. They're still waiting on Ward Burton to get here. That's it for crew. So uh, with this big turn, I cannot see where he is. So you guys have to give me an update. He's coming your way. So step back over the wall. Here comes Ward Burton. He's in. We've seen stops for Joe Nimichek. Jeff Burton has been in. Dale Jarrett. Sterling Marlin is in. Lap number 329. Glenn Jarrett can now see Ward Burton. Now Ward is here. Yes, I can see. But I don't see how Ward can. My goodness, the windshield is, is absolutely filthy on the car. So he's getting a clean job. They're stealing that strip off uh, two tires on the right side. I do not see a chassis adjustment. If there was one made here, it was made uh, by air pressure. And Ward is down in the way in 15.8 seconds. Wow, what a great stop under the gun again. I tell you guys, these got the 22 crew has turned into best pit stops consistently all day long. Now with Bobby Labonte pitting, Dale Earnhardt will pit right behind him. Tony Stewart has already been in. Steve Park making a pit stop. You saw Schrader pulling away. All of this under green, lap 330. Bill Elliott is in as well. Back to Glenn. Glenn checking another story. We'll go up pit road to Ralph. Bobby Labonte is in Eli. They're putting a half pound in the left front and a half pound out of the left rear. He's tied at the beginning of the run, and then it gets better. About a 16.5 second stop. Steve Burns. And Ralph Dale Earnhardt was just in. He got four tires and fuel only. No adjustments to the number three. So everything's cycling on around now. We are at lap 330. Remember that Bobby Labonte had a fairly sizable lead over some of the other teams that were running on the lead lap. So things will cycle around now. And coming back to the strike, let's reset it for you. Bobby Labonte does still have the race lead. Dale Earnhardt will still be second. Third is Tony Stewart. Roy Burton is fourth. Jeremy Mayfield comes across the stripe in fifth. Rusty Wallace is sixth. Dale Jarrett will be seventh. Mark Martin eighth. Jeff Gordon ninth. Ricky Rudd is tenth. Jeff Burton is eleventh. Sterling Marlin twelfth. 
Johnny Benson 13th and Steve Hart 14th. Those 14 cars are on the lead lap here at Rockingham. Lap 332 completes of the 393 that make up the Duraloop Kmart 400. That is the battle for second place. It's a dandy. Tony Stewart's got him. He tried and tried, and Stewart makes the move around Dale Earnhardt. So it's Bobby Labonte by five seconds now over the Stewart and Earnhardt battle at second and third. And it's three seconds further back to Ward Burton and Jeremy Mayfield. That's your top five. That was a great battle on going right there. Yeah, they went several laps side by side there, and it was an extreme difference in driving techniques. 20 car of Tony Stewart going in the corner much easier staying on the bottom. Dale Earnhardt, of course, his traditional hard in the corner, pushing all the way up to the wall. Now look at this. Here's Bobby Labonte about to put a lap on Steve Park, who led at lap 266. Here we are at 344. I mean, buddy, you know, you're a, you're a Hall of Famer, but even you got lapped here at Rocket. I mean, stuff will happen so quickly that you can go from leading this race to being a lap down. A very humbling racetrack. You can be out there and you think you're flying and you go look in the mirror and you go, I remember once I said, where is Kale? Did he just make a pit stop? They said, no, he's lapping you. And I looked at the scoreboard and we're 31 laps into the race. And I was running second. That's how good he was hooked up. Mm. Park has had a good day as well. He has been hooked up all day, and even though he is apparently about to go a lap down, he and that team have a lot to be proud of. They are a resurgent team. Last year was not as good a year as they had hoped for. Did some good work this winter. He's looking real good right now at Rockingham. Well, the good part was he really got hurt in Atlanta a couple of years back, and he fought his way back. I had to have surgery, and it took a long time to get back in the race. And Steve Parks answered all questions last year. He led most of the race at Atlanta where he was hurt the last race of the year last year. One of the most likable young men in the garage. If uh, Steve Park can get himself into victory lane this year, I'm sure everybody would be cheering for him. 46 laps to go here at The Rock. Look at that left side windshield. Nice and clean on Bobby Labonte's Interstate Batteries Pontiac. You know, I, I would imagine there'd be a lot less wrecks if you had that kind of mirror on, on your personal car. Look at the length of that mirror right there. I think anybody ought to be able to see out of that and know what's around them. Let's check in downstairs with Ralph. Glenn Jarrett talked a little while ago, Eli, about how difficult it is to see out of some of the windows. This is one of the windshield films that came off of Steve Park. Look how difficult it is to see the NASCAR Winston Cup officials through here. See all the grit and grime built up on this. They'll put these tabs on here to just be able to pull them off. It's just a film with a sticky surface on the backside, and they'll layer these up on top of the windshield, two or three of them, to give them an opportunity to pull this off and clean that windshield for the driver. So that's the update and a good bit of information on the technology. Just saw some smoke out of the Jeff Burton car. We'll keep an eyeball on that, but right now we're staying right here watching Bobby Labonte. We ride now with Jeff Burton. We were seeing a little smoke at the rear of the car. Well, he has a valve spring. They said it's giving him a problem, and that valve is probably trying to find a home in the top of one of those pistons in there. And if it does, that could well be the end of the day. This team decided at the end of the year last year that the one thing they needed more than anything else was consistency. Don't need engine trouble this early on in the season. And you know how devastating it would be now. There's only one car in the garage, and that's Robert Presley. There you see Skinner trying to bypass him. A little wisp of smoke seems now to have disappeared as quickly as it came. But, but Jeff's still not working as well as he was. Now let's see if second place goes the other way. Dale Earnhardt trying to take it right back from Tony Stewart. And what's happening right now, as these tires get hot, Earnhardt is in this way. He goes to a certain point, and all of a sudden the car comes to him, and he really picks up. Looks like he had the passenger in the car. Of course, what's also happening is they're now 5.6 seconds behind the leader, Bobby Labonte who has had to deal with some traffic, yes, but otherwise has not been battling anybody for position. Learnhardt's pretty much in a groove by himself up there. He's found a place that he can keep the momentum up in the car. I want for him to close in a little bit, but Bobby Labonte, very smart, not to overuse his car or overdrive at the corner. He get hooked up at this place. Kind of reminds me of uh, our late broadcasting partner, Neil Bonnet, the day he won from 
way back and on the back pitch. Remember that day he got hooked up and just never looked back. And you just don't see it that often. You know, that's an interesting picture of the back straightaway. All that stuff you see on the inside is used rubber just built up. And if you get in that, if you were to get sideways and get over on the left side in those marbles, we call it, you'd be in a big wreck. Park still on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte can't yeah. seem to get by him. Dale Earnhardt, though, still five and six tenth seconds behind in second. Let's check in down at his pit area. Eli, I'm with the crew chief, Kevin Hamlin. Kevin, it seems like your car is better on longer runs. Do you have enough time left to get to the front? Well, we're about five and a half seconds back from that 18 car right now, and you're right. Uh, we do we do have a setup in here that's easy on the tires, and Dale's trying to be easy on them and, and do long runs. Uh, the GM Country Service Plus Chevrolet's been running really well today. Really proud of all the guys for digging in real hard at the shop. Here at the track, coming up with a good setup for us to be competitive. We uh, we kind of struggled a little bit in speed weeks and trying to redeem ourselves today a little bit. So can you get to the front? That's the question. Well, I, I, that's yet to be seen. Uh, we just had to see how bad the 18 car slows down in this last run. He, he could have been holding back a little bit also. And that's part of this business, too. You just never know if the other guy has been showing you everything he's got. Earnhardt still five and six tenths seconds behind, and he's left Tony Stewart, you see, by about 10 or 12 car lanes now. Still in fourth spot, Ward Burton. Fifth is Jeremy Mayfield. Darrell Waltrip making an unscheduled pit stop at lap number 357. He is in. DW is running in 39th spot. He's a dozen laps down. Old Steve Park still trying to hang in there in that one car, but finally will go a lap down. So that means only 10 teams remain on the lead lap now as Bobby Labonte continues to show the way. The crowds are here. They're hoping that the clouds do not open up. Rain is just around the corner, but so is the checkered flag. Welcome back to The Rock. We've had our share of problems. Jeff Fuller hit the wall. Fuel spilled on the pit lane. Tires on, tires off, but for the most part, service has been fairly routine as we welcome you back to the Sand Hills region of North Carolina. It's a beautiful part of the country. I mean, there are golf courses all over the place, but again, there's a threat of rain here, but now we're within 30 laps of the finish, and the black flag is going out for Jeff Burton. Remember I told you before, he had some smoke showing from the rear of the car. It is now intensifying. Meanwhile, look at Bobby Labonte, that green number 18. He's closing in on the 28th of Ricky Rudd to put the ninth place car a lap down. And just in front of him, the eighth place car, Jeff Gordon, in that group there in the 24. Bobby Labonte is mowing, he is mowing them down. That's him right there. And you can see Bert, the 24 there of Gordon as he comes off the corner. Jimmy May car is crew chief. Bobby Labonte's crew chief watching along with Ralph Shaheen. He just spoke to his driver. We'll see if we get Jimmy to turn around here. Jimmy, you had 65 laps on that last set of tires. It looked like your right front wore a little more excessively than you'd hoped. Are you worried about that here in this last run? Well, yeah, we, we've been having a little bit of push in the center of the corners and freeing the car up all day long. We made another adjustment right there at the last stop, so hopefully that's going to get a little bit better. And, uh, Trying to tell Bobby just to take it easy as much as he can with the top, with the car. Try not to work that right front. All right, best of luck to you, Jimmy. Eli? Rob, thank you. Jeff Burton has made his pit stop as you watch Jeff Gordon in ninth place try to stay on the lead lap. Can't do it. Down a lap, he will go. Here's Ricky Rudd, who is now in eighth place in the 28 car. And now on pit road, you see Jeff Burton is in. We told you about the smoking problem. And the crew just took a real quick look. And if the problem continues, NASCAR will bring Jeff Burton back in again. Meanwhile, eighth place about to go a lap down. Bobby the body is just chewing him up. He is running better than anybody else on this racetrack. And at least right now, no one seems to be able to do anything at all, even to be able to keep up with Bobby the body at that number 18 car. We'll stay with this ongoing juggernaut for Bobby Labonte. If you are a Jeff Burton fan, NASCAR 
says, nope, you didn't fix the car. It's still smoking. He'll be coming back in again as Jeff Burton is being black flagged now at the other end of the racetrack. While you ride with Ricky Rudd, I was just going to update someone. We didn't talk about uh, Dale. Yeah, I'll get it out in a second. Dale Jarrett, he is up to sixth already. And he's just been very quiet. He's working his way around the racetrack. Not making a lot of news right now, but he's very consistent. Yeah, up to sixth from 23rd starting position. He has had a good run today. Meanwhile, let's go to Glenn Jarrett down on pit road. Well, guys, while we're away in break, Rusty Wallace, the pole sitter, had a bad problem. He had to come in. Uh, he was complaining about the car being all over the racetrack. Well, there was a reason for that. Uh, they left the left side lug nuts loose from the left rear tire, and the, and the car, the wheel wallowed out. It wallowed the uh, lug nut openings op open, and uh, had a, picked up a big, big vibration. So Rusty was running eighth at the time, and it dropped him back to about 15th or so in the running order. So tough break for Rusty Wallace. He was on the lead lap, but uh, he will not finish that way. In 14th position right now, you see Michael Waltrip in that number seven machine climbing the banking. Michael. In 23rd spot, some four laps down. There's Michael right there. Far calmer weekend than it was at Daytona for him a weekend ago. Well, I guess upside down in yeah. one race and crash DNF in the other. He did not have very much fun in Daytona in 19 or 2000. It's going to be 19 something for a lot of us for yeah. a long while, yeah. isn't it? We'll all be saying that. I think. 8,000 RPMs. 150 miles an hour. See him just touching the brake in the center car of the corner, trying to settle that car down. It's all the way at the top of the speedway there. Not handling the way he wants it to. Jeff Burton still on the pit lane. He was black flagged again by NASCAR, while Bobby Labonte has four and three tenths of a second advantage on Dale Earnhardt. 20 laps to go. 379, now 380 on the board as we're within shouting distance of the finish here at the Rock. Bobby Labonte continues to pace the field. You know, TNN is in the movie business. And funny man Bill Engvall is your host for TNN Sofa Cinema. This week's movie, Witness to the Execution. See it Thursday night at 8 Eastern and Pacific right here on TNN. And, and Sofa Cinema. That's what Bobby Labonte is, Sofa Cinema right now. He's just taking it easy. Yeah, he's been in the easy chair all day when a car's working that well. Makes for a special kind of day. That's a battle for position. Rusty Wallace just grabs 12th away from Kenny Schrader. They are a couple of laps down, but nevertheless, as we watch Schrader's telemetry, that was a battle for position right there. We'll be down at 10 laps to go the next time by. Checking things right now. This has to be close to a, a record as far as time for the race here. I'm telling you, they're flying around here. Yeah. Dale Jarrett just grabbed fifth spot away. And look at this. He's about to be lapped himself. And folks, the fewest cars we've ever had in the lead lap in a 400-mile race here in Rockingham was seven back in February of 96, and we're looking at having about five cars on the lead lap before this one is done, as we ride with Jarrett, and he goes a lap down. So and now only four cars on the lead lap. And a very classy move by Dale Jarrett this in. He has a little uh, interest in the 18 also. His brother-in-law is a mechanic on the 18 there, the crew chief, Jimmy Maycar. Turns and inches on the 18 for Bobby Labonte, so you notice Jarrett just pull over and let the leader go by. All right, Jimmy Maycar married to Patty Jarrett. There also wasn't anything he could do with that 18. Bobby Labonte is absolutely hooked up and flying. Dominant this afternoon at Rocky. If there's one thing that he's doing right now that could be, well, I don't want to say it, but he's really dicing himself through the traffic right now. And, Two or three times he's been very close to lap traffic making contact with him, so he has to be very careful now because it's his race to give away. Yeah, he's got a nice rhythm as he does it, doesn't he? I mean, he just sort of sashaying and slides through. It's almost like he's dancing with that race car. Yeah, but you don't know what that guy in front of you might do. If he had to check up real quick, hey, you're there. Yeah, in high school I learned you have to be careful who you dance with. <laughs> yeah. 
There you see Kelly Jarrett. Zachary and the whole family looking on. Wait to see how Dale does. He's running in fifth right now. Bobby Labonte didn't even take the lead until lap 242 for the first time here today. And since then he's led about 135 laps or so. It'll be five laps to go next time by for Bobby Labonte. That man right there. Oh, moving inside of Robbie <laughs> Gordon. Dale Earnhardt's only one and nine tenths seconds back. He has closed the margin significantly, but there you see the distance that Dale will have to make up in just five miles of racing. Distance plus, he'll have to get by Gordon, he'll have to get by Nadeau and Irwin and so on. You can see the traffic getting out of the way for Earnhardt, though he's not giving up. No, not at all. There's a good scramble right there. Tony Stewart in the number 20. He's in third. The 22, Ward Burton running in fourth. They're alongside the 11 of Rick Bodine. Ward right down on the bottom picks the throttle up. As they start down the front straightaway, Ward Burton's car is hooked up pretty well on the bottom part of the racetrack. See that bad, bad weather moving in, but looks like we are going to beat Mother Nature here today. Only a handful of laps to go. And you can see with these onboard looks, not a single raindrop anywhere. Labonte now one and six tenths seconds up on that black car. Dale right. Earnhardt in second, but laps are down to just three. Yeah. His crew is telling him exactly where that black number three is so he can position himself. He does not want to get that black three car of Earnhardt close. Well, what this means is he really believes that he can win that eighth championship. Already seven times he's been national champion, and he's proven it today. This team is coming together. Earnhardt. There's third place swapping hands right there. Roy Burton grabs it away from Tony Stewart. Now the next time by, that man will be seeing the white flag, Bobby Labonte. The whole crew just waiting for this last mile to click off the clock. Peter Jellin. And the rest of the interstate team waiting with the white flag out. Bobby Labonte looking for his first Rockingham win. Coupled with his brother Terry, who's won here twice, this would be the third set of brothers to win NASCAR Winston Cup races here at The Rock. Skinner in front of him, the only car he's gonna have to dodge before Bobby Labonte gets to the checkered flag. Earnhardt's one and two ten seconds back, not enough time. Bobby Labonte wins at Rockingham for the first time in his 15th NASCAR Winston Cup race here. It'll be his 13th Winston Cup win overall, interestingly, all on the super speedways. Finally, Dale Earnhardt catches up with him and goes by, but it's too late by a half mile. Bobby Labonte wins here at Rockingham, his 100th top 10 finish in his Winston Cup career. What a bummer. Earnhardt got up beside him and didn't hit him in the door. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about Pontiacs before as the interstate team with team owner Joe Gibbs saying a bit of a post-race prayer the 11th Pontiac win in the last 25 Rockingham races. Back with Victory Lane and a whole lot more coming up. Welcome back, everybody, to The Rock. Everyone's down there in Victory Lane. There's Mr. Peanut lurking in the back there, son. <laughs> Everybody's here, and Bobby Labonte is the winner at the North Carolina Speedway. Families on hand. That makes the day very worthwhile right there. And high fives all the way around. And again, Bobby didn't lead until lap 242. He raced when he had to. And then he took it out of the house and lapped just about everybody and his brother. Only four cars on the lead lap when this one was done. Let's head downstairs to Victory Lane, Glenn. And we got to get the boss up here, the son Tyler up here with Bobby. And Bobby, looks like you took you uh, took up where you guys left off last year with the Pontiacs. When you come to these one-mile racetracks and such, uh, you guys are just dominant. What a great performance in the last, the last half of that race. Well, I mean, we just kept adjusting all, all, on it all day, and they uh, guys made a great job in the pits, uh, made great stops in the pits. We made great adjustments and uh, kept working with it, you know, and uh, the track kind of came to us there at the end. Uh, you know, I got tight, and then uh, we started loosening it up a little bit, and that was a little bit better. And, uh, 
Oh, uh, Earnhardt, he taught me a little something before, before the race started. He told me something, and uh, it helped out there at the end. That was awesome. Great, great day for the Interstate Pontiac. What did he tell you? Share it with us, man. I'm not telling you. Just between me and him. But, well, I don't drive anymore. You can tell me. No, I ain't telling you. I'll tell you what. All these sponsors uh, did a great job. The pit crew did a great job today. Jimmy May Car made some great adjustments. Uh, Greg Zipidelli on the 20 car, Tony. Everybody works hard together. Uh, all our sponsors, MBNA, Chef Boyardee is a new sponsor we got. Uh, yep, Chef Boyardee. Uh, Wicks Filters, uh, Champion Spark Plugs, Goodyear Tires were great today. This Pontiac ran great. Uh, Mark, they put in a brand new motor this morning. Uh, you know, got this Easy Care uh, uh, Coke. We got Coke. We got everybody in here, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, we want to say hi to Joe. He's, he's with his mom, I believe, right now, and uh, she's not doing too good. So we want to thank him for all of his support that he's given us. And, man, this is awesome. <laughs> You had to race another couple of Pontiacs, too. Uh, your teammate, Tony Stewart, had a great day. And Ward Burton had a really strong car. He's the guy that you had to pass for the lead the final time. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, they were a little bit off on sequences. But uh, Earnhardt came on strong at the end on every segment. And uh, knew he had 65 laps to go there at the end. And uh, knew that it was just, uh, you know, knew he would be coming on strong. We had a lot of lap traffic to go through. And he had to go through the same thing. It was just really, uh, you know, one slip on my part, and he would have been right there on my bumper instead of, uh, you know, a second and a half behind us because he, he made up four seconds here in the last, you know, 20 laps probably. So uh, my hat's off to those guys. They did a great job with that uh, good wrench, Monte Carlo. But, uh, you know, we're just uh, thrilled to be right here right now. Just an awesome day. Thank God for a great day and my wife and kids and uh, everybody here. Well, Bobby, I know it's awful. <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question. I know it's awfully early to even be thinking about this, but a lot of people are touting you and your team uh, for a p possible uh, championship contender. You're off to a great start in that respect. It's only the second race, man. We can't worry about that. And I appreciate the offer and asking everything, but uh, our focus is week in and week out. We just got to be the best we can week in and week out. Uh, again, these guys do a great job. It's a great team effort. Got to say hi to Mike uh, back home. Uh, they got hurt last week on the 20 car. He's not with us this weekend. We hate, hate that he's hurt, but uh, hope he's getting better and, uh, you know, wish him a speedy recovery. Is this the race car you'll take to Las Vegas, or do you have a better one? Well, we got the car we ran at Homestead last year that we finished second with. So we got uh, we didn't bring this car. We want to bring this car, and then uh, – I uh, kind of overruled Jimmy on bringing it. It's a brand new car. We tested at Lakeland, and uh, it was a, it's a great car. And it was a great, uh, great overrule on your part. Now, you got that bottle of Coke in your hand. Give me about 20, 30 seconds to get out here and spray them. I got you. You got it. <laughs> Congratulations to Bobby Levani and the entire Joe Gibbs team. Great performance dominating in the last half of this race. An understatement with he, Earnhardt, Ward Burton, and Tony Stewart, the only cars that ended the day on the lead lap. It's been a while since we've seen that kind of blatant domination. Bobby Labonte, of course, the Bryant hot driver of the race. No question about that. Shivering cold at home up there in the northeast or somewhere. Call Bryant <laughs> to the rescue at 1-888-999-BRYANT. We're coming right back. We got it in before the rains came. That's good. Fans are going home happy. Bobby Labonte going home happiest.